fly like an eagle. Our club has always been about the people. And the impact we have. We create opportunities. We dare to dream. About what we can achieve together. We aim to entertain. And we deliver results. Our teams inspire our community. And our community inspires us. We work together. To push boundaries. Building a better future. For everyone. It's our spirit that bonds us. Our members. Our partners. Our players. Our staff. Our youth. Our community. Our county. We are Essex. We are the... We are the... We are the... We are the Eagles! Porter bowls to uh, Bell Drummond, drops her hands on that big appeal, gone! Long hold. I thought maybe height would be an issue there. Daniel Bell Drummond had a look down the pitch and Jamie Porter has struck. I've opened that can of worms to start. Here we go. Porter two leading. He's off the mark. It's a leg glance and that'll be four runs. Just straying on middle uh, Porter. Nothing terribly wrong with the delivery, but Porter two leaning. Oh, that's him on the pad. Gets forward. Oh, he's gone. He's gone. Ooh. And a Jack leaning a hold there, and I wonder a bit like Daniel Bell Drummond if he feels he's got just outside the off stump yeah. in terms of impact, but he's got to go. So you're not going to reach the keeper standing back too often, as this time it's uh, Nick, and it's gone through. It's gone through third slip, not a gully. Third slip for me. Short mid off is uh, Jordan Cox. It's a lovely shot actually from Ben Compton using all the momentum from the bowler and has just with very little back lift steered that through extra cover. Here's Porter and this one again slightly too straight, it's flicked away and it's going to be making its way down towards the fine leg boundary. Maybe too straight there from Porter and passes the umpire and oh, it's bowled him. Beautiful delivery there by Stater. Denley's lost one of his poles. And unfortunately, he's going to be having to make his way back. Eating Harmer, three men round the bat. He swept this. This is going to run away. It's well, an attempted dive at short fine leg. It's going to run away for four. Can I say that was a really fine executed. It's uh, Harmer to uh, Compton. That's a lovely shot on the back foot driving Compton. First time we've really seen him be a little bit more explosive, but hasn't needed to be so far. He moves on to 122. 700 score from Warwickshire. Critchley bowls. Yes. Up is from Vidge and yes. gone. First ball. Well, that's great captaincy, great bowling, and taken by Tom Wesley, the captain, at uh, mid off. On the cut strip, about two metres away from. Jaden Denley and Essex have got a wicket. The ball has come off the inside edge of the left-hander's bat and it's spooned straight into the hands. His beard past the umpire. It's a beautiful drive through long on from Agar. Well, Ben Compton on 126. This ball is turned round the corner. They're going to take one. He's probably going to come back for a second. As uh, no, it's gone for four all the way down to the executive spinner. Then, uh, oh, that ball's turned, he's going for it, gone up for it, and the umpire has adjudged him LBW deep cover up. He's gone for a slog sweep, he's played a miss, and that's going to go for four buys. Well. It's been quite an interesting over this. But a lot better, doesn't it? Hello, Nikki. Hello. Reverse sweep there from uh, Compton. Sorry, I distracted you there. Or from. Uh, yes, yeah, from Compton, isn't it? Going to be four runs. It's Beard bowls to Gilchrist. Drive. That's a lovely shot from Gilchrist for all his troubles. That's one of the shots of the day. Slightly over pitched by Beard. That's an off drive of some beauty. This one pretty much in the slot. It looks to go big. It, has he gone all the way? Just. He has. Just. Just have to stick our head out the window here. Yeah. And he goes for this one again. It's lofted. Fielder underneath it. Or is it going all the way? It is indeed. He's picked up that slog sweep and that has gone for six. This one down the ground. Uses his feet. Drops it softly into the offside. And that means he will get up his 150. Ben Compton brings 
up his 150. You can hear the applause round the ground. So, yeah, well done, Ben Gil. Compton. Gilchrist on strike, oh. and uh, the finger goes up. I believe he's edged that, and it's gone straight into the hands of Pepper. Hampshire has one. Critchley in again, and it's been caught. He's played it off the back foot, started to break away in a West Indian style, and he started to go to the leg side, and he edged it to the slip. With just a slip in, he goes for a lap, and he's bowled him, and he's got his first wicket of the inning. Simon Harmer has eventually bowled, and we had that long discussion with Matt Cole about whether he would... Here's Gilgaris to Elgar on this one. The full delivery worked off the legs into the onside. It's probably going to go all the way. And just it does. Missing. It just hits the rope. Mickey yourself. says Sucria. And this one is down the leg side. And it's going to go down for buys here. As Gilgaris in. This is whipped off uh, the legs. And that's going to run away very quickly to the long part of the boundary, which is deep square leg. My word. Coming down the slope from the Graham Gooch end. He bowls. Good ball, that. That's an edge, and it's going to go down for four. Agar in, bowls. It's short. It's pulled. There's a man out there, a deep square leg, and he's been caught. Cushy has to go. He's taken the bait. It's a big boundary to the across the netting area. Otherwise, everyone's more or less on the single. I think there is a long cough. I mean. That's a good shot as... He's played it on the length. He's gone back and punch pulled it through a, a straightish mid wicket for, for Garrett's ball inside edge as it's going to run away for four down to the river stand, which is beneath us here. Here's Garrett around the wicket to Elgar and there's a bit of shout and the finger goes up. Garrett gets the breakthrough, gets his first wicket. Dean Elgar has been caught. Here comes Garrett, and this time flicked away by Wesley. A beautiful looking shot. Beats the fielder at mid wicket and is going to go all the way and kiss the advertising hoarding. In he comes again past the umpire, and this one is a leading edge. He's going to run down towards third. Goes all the way as well. Here are in again, and slightly back of a length, and Wesley leans back and Plays this off the back foot through to cover, deep cover. And he strides from the Graham Gooch end and there's a big shout and the finger goes up and he gets his second wicket. And he comes past the umpire and it's a short ball and it's pulled away off the front foot by Critchley. Beautiful looking pull shot. It's guided and timed with perfection as it kisses the boundary rope and the umpire signals four run as in comes Parkinson again and Cox goes to reverse sweep and he beats the fielder that point and it's run away down to the boundary Parkinson in again and Cox goes to reverse sweep again and it beats the fielder at point once again and it kisses the boundary there you go in short pulled another no ball he really is struggling. That's going to go for four, as it has. Good shot, well controlled. Parkinson starts a new over. This one, shorter delivery, and it's pulled away. Yep. And it's going to go all the way. The umpire signals four. A bit of the IPL. Parkinson's in again. This is Fuller to compensate Ooh. on the previous ball, and this time it's been lofted over, and it's gone all the way. It hits the covers as well. Here at the ground as in comes Parkinson past the umpire and a shorter delivery and it's pulled away by Jordan Cox. Apology by Critchley. But it's a precaution. Gilchrist is in, driven down the ground. No one's moving, only mid on to go and collect the ball. What a super shot there about the win tomorrow. Got Jaden Dunley into the attack and his first ball, unfortunately, has been sent the distance by Jordan Cox. As, uh, oh, Pepper tees off. This is huge in the air. Is it going to get to... It is to Wanda Mieja. That's a no, really... No, no, the no. bowler looks disappointed. I thought he'd taken that. He Goodness did, me. but he went over. And it's gone over the rope. Personally. 
as Gilchrist bowls. This is pulled, pulled, and it's gone oh. for six over the Felsted stand. And that is a mighty clop. He's picked that up. Didn't worry about being in the air. It's a full toss. Hello. It's gone for six. He raises his bat and he takes his helmet off and he salutes the dressing room. Well played, Jordan Cox. That's a hundred for him. Facing Gilchrist. It's bold shorts. Oh. This is pulled above the Felstead school stand, above the trees, in the air, and just miss fielders. This is an onslaught. Pepper goes again. I've lost that. That's coming towards the balcony and hits the hits the railings in front, as you could probably hear. It's bounced back obligingly for Tawanda Mie to catch. As Parkinson bowls, Pepper goes for this one. It's a mighty thump for consecutive sixes to end the day. I think that six it is indeed. And that is the end of the day with Essex on two, five, seven for four. Well, Jordan, we'll come on to the situation of the game in just a <laughs> second. But I think I speak probably for everyone that was watching that during the last hour when I just say, wow, why don't you tell us how you're feeling right now? Yeah, obviously, it's a good day. Um, to get them four on day two to only get three weeks during the day to then bowl them out today and, and to score enough runs where we can have a proper go at them tomorrow is going to be really good. Um, so we're in a good scenario in the game, um, but obviously happy to contribute to the team. Um, I felt like I've you know, given my wicket away you know, the last couple of innings, getting just 50s and not kicking on. So to kick on today against my old club obviously is obviously really happy. Yeah, and you mentioned obviously your old club there. Is that a moment of significance for you that your first one came in Essex Colours against Kent or is it just it's another game? I haven't thought about it that much yet. Um, I th I'm sure I'll watch the highlights and watch a bit of it, but um, obviously it's hundreds of hundred. You know, it's it's awesome to get one. Um, it, it's cool. It's against Kent. You know, my old club. I, I know the players. I know the team. But no, it's it's, it's the same every week. I, if, if possible, I would love to get those peaks. And it just seemed like everything that you were hitting seemed to come off. You know, they were going all around the ground. Was it a case of once you got going, it was just fluency and everything carried on from there? Yeah, I think we had, I think we had choices or decisions what we were going to do by a few suggestions. Um, but, you know, we're in a very good uh, situation now, which is handy. But no, it was just going about there and being positive. Critch came out there and started smoking it. And I always think to myself, well, I might as well bat like he's been batting, you know, taking the game on, you know. And, Instead of waiting for you know a good ball to get you out, actually you know pushing forward and, and scoring runs before it gets you. Yeah, and on the subject of Critch, he's obviously uh, proved his worth with bat and ball. Took a five four. How was it fielding, watching him sending down those leg work and uh, cleaning yeah, Kent up? Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, very good. I don't know if that's his first in Essex colours, but everyone was cheering like it was. Um, <laughs> but no, for him to do that is is awesome. You know, to have Karma at the other end. You know, a world class spinner. For him to do that for the team. To show that it's not only one spear of this club, then you know it's perfect. Love you too. <laughs> you've, you've got you've got you've got a fan club. I think uh, not not just her, but uh, plenty of other people in this ground and watching on that stream. So as we move forward into day four, there's a chance of a victory. If the rain holds off, I think we've got a real good chance. Um, obviously, you know the wicket suited for for our spinners. Um, so let's hope. You know, fingers crossed. The weather stays away and we get a win.
Well, let's let's talk about that off the end of the over, shall we, uh, Don? Rather than um, break oh. into this now with uh, with Shane Snater. Mm, I'll leave that to you. So, S Snater was given a glowing reference by the bowling coach yesterday, wasn't he? He was indeed. So, what a, an incredible competitor he was. But. Uh, um, He's going to come round the wicket. Jordan Cox is actually not going to be far away from him. And a short mid-off <laughs> to Ben Compton. The short mid-on as well. Slip, leg slip, a snate of bowls. And Compton just dabs down on this, as is his wont. Inside part of the bat, not entirely convincing for his first ball. And I think it's Luke Benkenstein coming in from uh, square leg uh, to feel, do the fielding. So as a, a sub-fielder on. I can't identify the absentee right now, but keeping an eye on... Uh, what's happening uh, in the middle right now so Snater to bowl to uh, Compton down the leg side in hands for a second now I don't think Compton got very far near it actually but Pepper fields it effectively with his pads and, um, and the ball will skew away harmlessly Four for done then in the second over. 64, well, we'll say minimum available. It's a bit of a, a strange way of saying it, but uh, obviously if Essex get through their overs quick enough, they could bowl more. But uh, 64, as long as we don't have any more breaks. Or 63 with this one. Oh, I said rising delivery from Snater. That's come mm. off a length. Off a good length. Mm, and up, up to the shoulder of uh, Ben Compton. Well, that'll give them all sorts of encouragement, Don, won't it? Very much so, yes. A great delivery. Keeper standing up with the batsman having to return to his crease, staying within his crease because the keeper's up. But that really was a cracking delivery from around the wicket. It bounced and probably just went away, but uh, it was certainly a bit of encouragement for the Essex bowlers. Snater around the wicket then to uh, Compton, right behind that one this time. A more regulation bound, uh, bounce, it must be said. Mm. make the player bowl, uh, batsman play is the order of the day which Essex traditionally do Porter didn't quite finish his uh, arms off I felt in the last over bowling three down the leg side but Snater's bowling nice and straight and Compton's having to play <clears throat> just a slip and a leg slip adjacent to the keeper yeah it's a Snater then and on the drive as well it's off the thigh pad I think scuffs down towards the leg slip and there's no run so Essex got three catches maybe four catches interestingly uh, the, 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 we've got a slip conventional slip a leg slip and then we've got an Essex fielder under a snood on the offside like mid off silly mid off and then a silly mid wicket in respects who's yeah. also <laughs> wearing a snood they look like the SAS in the Alps there's Elgar on the offside, leg side Jordan Cox. It's a great delivery from Snater again, thumping into the gloves outside the off stump. And that will be the end of the over. Uh, four for none off two overs of this final day and the Kent's uh, uh, final innings as well. And uh, the news to bring you and mm. you'll understand why we just wanted to give this a little bit of time is that mm. uh, Kent Cricket have announced and the announcement, announcement has gone out that's uh, about the death of Derek Underwood. Oh. Um, they called him an icon of the club, and I yeah. think that's fair to say. An yeah. absolute legendary cricketer, not just for yeah. Kent, but for England as well, oh. at the age of 78. But uh, that news just coming into us. But um, uh, from our point of view, obviously, listeners may want to share their, their memories of as deadly as he, he was known and uh, fantastic left arm bowler and an absolute legend of his era and beyond. Porter in through to the keeper and there's a appeal, probably a half-hearted appeal from Porter, but pretty em emphatic from Pepper, but the umpires are, ju are judged not out. May I reiterate, um, I grew up at the St. Lawrence ground um, and spent my formative years, uh, Canterbury Cricket Weeks, I had a brother on the Kent staff who was actually understudy to Derek Underwood as Porter's on his way in, two slips awaiting. And this is nice and straight. Mie plays back up to mid on no run. So I spent many hours 
oh, how many times have will I have got his autograph, <laughs> spoken to him, and when he became sort of on the committee and grew in stature away from playing, but on the Kent committee, etc., he was always there. He was very encouraging towards me as I made my career. Um, but I remember him, I would always stop to chat. Lovely man, but what a wonderful, wonderful cricketer, skillful. Not forgetting we, uh, his night watchman, watchmanship with England, with Kent, um, but he was just one of the one of the best left arm bowlers there has ever been. Mm. You know, we think about Bish and Betty, but Derek Underwood would be talked about in the same circles mm. and brackets. He was a world class spin bowler. As Porter's in, bowls a nice delivery, which is played back up to mid on no run. That's one of my first cricketing memories, actually, is queuing up for a, an autograph from the great man. And yes. uh, he did it, uh, uh, he actually just lined up a number yes. of small boys, all eager with the autograph books, and but with a fantastic humour. And uh, yes. just, uh, I think a people have met him in uh, before that time and after that time will... Will remember him as that man as well. They yes. are just a really genial character, as well as. It doesn't, doesn't always go, does it, with being a, a fantastic sport, sporting figure? But uh, he had time for many of us. Porter in, bowls a good delivery. He's got his line right this over, finishing his arms off. Uh, customary action, follow through. And this is played into the offside model forward defence. We send our best wishes to the family and uh, indeed to all the people that uh, know him gosh he was a revered man and when you talk about his autograph he had a rather large and flamboyant d in his Derek underwood autograph this is forced into the leg side where it falls just short of short mid wicket there is no run four without loss and those were was it four buys, four leg buys? Um, nobody has scored a run off the bat as yet. So, yeah, we'd, we'd love to hear from you because so many yeah. Kent Essex supporters, supporters all around the country will, will know about Derek Underwood and have memories of him too as an England player, of course, particularly. Porter in, bowls, and there's a nick, and he's been caught by the keeper who drops to his knees on his right-hand side, Maye has to go, caught by Pepper, bowled by Porter, score four for one, and Essex have just made a little indentation. Yeah, he's not made a great start for the season to Wanda Maye, and that one is uh, uh, gone behind to the wicket keeper. Uh, Jamie Porter has done that many, many times, but this is a really important one for them at the top of the innings. And Kent, four for one, they really need to hold their nerve here, the away side, if they're going to make a fist of this, because. We saw Essex do this, and I know I said this yesterday, we saw Essex do this to Nottinghamshire. Scoreboard pressure, and then these, this bowling attack, albeit without Sam Cook as well, who are nagging with their accuracy, never giving the batters a, a moment's peace. And the first one has gone with the new ball, the Kookaburra ball, four for one. Daniel Bell Drummond joins Ben Compton. These two, of course, centurions. <coughs> From the first innings, um, they've barely had time to uh, to think about what they might do uh, in the second. After a, an absolute cavalcade of hitting from Essex, they were in the field for watching the ball disappear. And now they've got to reset their minds, Dawn, to come back and perhaps do what they did in the first innings all over again, these two. Well, absolutely. They'll be desperately trying to mm. keep... Essex at bay here having played so well and you rightly described how well they played it's going to be Snater again who bowled a good first over to be brutally honest Essex, Essex's first over from Porter was average Snater's first over was terrific and Porter's second over the one we've just witnessed and commented on was also terrific so What's Compton going to do? Keep us standing up with Snater about to bowl. Um, we've had some, we've had some decent showers. They've they've been quite heavy when they've come, and the ball, if it goes to the outfield, will get slightly wet. 
as that's Nata bowls to Compton into the offside and Dean Elgar fields and there's no run you talked about the gusty wind <coughs> for me yes it does affect you as a bowler when you get to your delivery point and the gust comes in and moves you here we've got a bit of a cross breeze it's coming from the little scoreboard so for Snater it's probably helping him swing the ball away um, well for Porter it's helping him angle it back in so Snater to bowl to Compton Compton again it rises up towards his thigh power but he just gently nudges that to uh, Jordan Cox had a long chat last night just after I'd interviewed Ben Compton actually Jordan Cox came over and um, Ben Compton warmly congratulated him and said that's nice fantastic innings and they, they went off for a, a chat together nice so yeah really was um, Ben Compton is a He's a fine fellow, I have to say. He was very gracious in his interview to, to Essex and particularly to Jordan Cox in his interview last night. He said he was superb. And this one's seen off into the offside and there's no run. So, yeah. I, I'm going to suggest what might happen here. I don't think it's going to be long. It may be after two overs. It may be after three. But yeah. I think Harmer will be introduced to the attack from our end, the Sir Alistair Cook end. And Snater will take a break. And he will follow Porter in from the top end. That is my humble guess of what might happen. Three balls to come of this over. Snater bowls to Compton. Turns it into the onside. Fielded by Jordan Cox. Um, I said he has snood or whatever. Just It's white all the way up to his... Beyond his nose. He just yeah, about is. might have the eyes showing. I'm not sure. He's doing a little dance yeah. at the moment. I'd imagine that's as much to uh, keep himself warm. He has one of those... Uh, American football style, the NFL uh, mufflers in front of him, a white one. The quarterbacks used them in the NFL right. uh, to keep the hands I'm warm. You see is Jordan it? Cox there? He's just got, yeah, the, got yeah. the muffler in front of him there. You take the hands out now and uh, here's uh, Snater to bowl to Compton, defended with the dead hands. A dead muffler? Rather, into the onside. I thought that's yeah. one of the, mic uh, the microphones that we use for the muffler. Or maybe it's a... Is it I've a, never heard yeah. of that. Look at what he's doing I, there. I'm so not it's, like a, it's like a new set of pockets in front. What do they it? call those? Little roll and you put your hands in. And so and it's it got to be in. under their jumper or uh, their shirt. If you look at Jordan Cox now, you can you can see himself. He's, he's just taking his hands out there. But uh, yeah, so uh, a wind protector, if you like. I'm not is sure if it, it attaches to the belt or attaches to the jumper. But yeah, just got the almost as if he had a oh. pockets on a hoodie there, but it's in front there. Y you wouldn't like to be in the slips in a day like this, it's would you? It's really, really chilly out there. He's uh, snated a bowl to uh, Compton with uh, soft hands, plays that into the on side again. And there is no run. I uh, just want to, uh, if I can, just read some quotes yeah. from um, yes. Kent's chairman, Simon Philip, on yeah. um, on. Derek Underwood, we heard of his passing this afternoon at the age of 78. Um, and Simon Phillips saying that the Kent Cricket family is in mourning following the passing of one of its greatest ever players. He was an outstanding contributor both uh, to Kent and England, winning trophies for the club and country and etching his name in the history books forever. Watching Derek weave his unique magic on a wet wicket was a privilege for all who were able to witness it. His induction uh, into the ICC Hall of Fame shows the esteem in which he was held in world cricket the thoughts of everyone at Kent Cricket with Derek's friends and family at this sad time that from um, Kent Cricket chair at Simon Phillip and echoes the thoughts of us all I think and I'm sure I said our listeners will have uh, of a, a generation will have great memories of him forced off the back forced off the back foot by the captain Daniel Bell Drummond Porter's delivery has found itself to mid off no run it's a five love extra, sorry, with us just uh, at the moment and we've just been reflecting. I know Kevin has been, Kevin Howes has been talking to you about Derek Underwood's passing, but just uh, reflecting on that, of course, here at uh, Essex against Kent as well. And just been uh, reading some words you may have heard them from the, the Kent chair, Simon Phillip, about uh, uh, his memory. Porter's in, bowls with two slips and a leg slip. He bowls nice and straight. He got the wicket in his last over, but it's played out to mid uh, mid wicket who's wearing a snood two Essex players are wearing snoods in fact three Harmer's got one they look as if they should be in a battle in the Alps dressed in white and all you can see are their Essex caps and 
their eyes as porters in bowls it's played into the leg side and there is no run yeah very sad day for kent cricket and england cricket and i would imagine certainly of um, many of the commentators who grew up playing cricket would have certainly revered the skills uh, of Derek Underwood I remember so vividly of being at Kent Cricket Week at Canterbury as Porter Bowles a good delivery played on to the offside there off the back foot Bell Drummond good delivery and searching delivery from Porter who's already induced the nick of uh, Tawanda Maye's bat through to the keeper keeper Pepper keeping not Rossington Rossington's got an injured thumb injured last week at Trent Bridge but Derek Underwood yeah very sad day wonderful wonderful cricketer for Kent and indeed England Porter in bowl short Bell Drummond looks for a single good cricket all round good delivery well played by the Kent captain looks for a single but turns it down at the last minute and rightly so as Aaron Beard at mid off prevents the single four without four for one and I welcome into the commentary box again following her debut yesterday Nikki Chowdhury hello hello afternoon are you well I'm very well just a bit chilly but are apart you? from that I'm very well as Porter's in bowls and this is clipped into the leg side I think that may have come off the thigh pad we are blinded by the batsman and yes the umpire who's wearing a snood is is uh, confirming a leg by end of the over five for one Porter has the wicket now snoods you're a you're a dedicated follower of fashion snoods I feel like that's a little bit far-fetched snoods I, I, I haven't own one. one no nor don't. do I nor do I. Maybe and I, I think Matt Cole introduced the muffler. What's a muffler? Do you know of a muffler? Headgear or... No, it's handgear, isn't it? Hand warmer that's around the bread basket. Right, mm. never seen one of those before. No, I, d I don't know. Sounds like something you might wear at a skateboard park. I don't know. I've never been to a skateboard know. park no, either, so I. I wouldn't be able to say it, but safe to say that the players out there are wrapped up pretty well I think it's Dean Elgar at short mid wicket is extremely cosy as in comes Snater and this one's just defended off the front foot by Bell Drummond they all look pretty well wrapped up as though I think we could literally just drop them at a ski resort right now <laughs> given how well wrapped up most of the players are looking there was one particular film that James Bond was in the mountains and you had all those, the opposition were dressed in white, fighting in the snow. Essex look a bit like that at the moment. <laughs> Here's Snater running away from us, passes the umpire and it's a shorter Shot. delivery and Bell Drummond's off the front foot. He pulls it, stays slightly lower and the ball just about makes it all the way and hits the boundary rope. That was a really good shot from Bell Drummond. He punch pulled it. It wasn't that that short, but he did pick up the Kent captain the length, yes. and he was able to punch pull that through squarish yes. mid wicket. It really was a, a fantastically executed shot. He picked up the length well. You as a batsman would appreciate that. Yeah, I did a really good job of that, and it did stay a bit low. It skidded on. He did a good job to keep eyes on it the whole way. Well, Essex will be hoping that day four pitch here at Chelmsford, whilst it might just offer a little bit of spin, especially I think Harmer will come on soon with the newish, hardish ball, Chelmsford can have a little bit of, bit of variable bounce, a little bit of up and down on day four, and Essex will be hoping that that will come into play. You're not missing any action. Both, uh, the key, uh, the, both batsmen are tending to their kit, the non-striker Ben Compton is uh, looking uh, at his laces and doing a bit of gardening and I think Bell Drummond was doing his laces up. Yeah, but it seems to have got that sorted. He's in a stance now, taps his bat a couple of times as in comes Snater now, full delivery. Bell Drummond's forward and it's an outer edge and it's running down towards third man region and they'll pick up a couple in the process. 
Safe shot there, played with soft hands. Yes, he did open the face. There's a vacancy down at third man. So he was able to collect uh, a brace of runs. He's a good... He plays the ball late, Daniel Bell Drummond. Um, comes forward. I think he's a very talented batsman. So on strike again, crouch low in his stance, and this time leaves it alone outside the off stump. Yeah, playing the ball late, sign of a good batter. Correct. Yep, yep. In uh, essence, as long as you can play the ball late, you've pretty much not mastered it, but it really does help. <laughs> in, in coaching, which I've done a fair bit over the years, it's always been quite hard to describe to young fellas, young batsmen, young ladies, about why and how to play the ball late. It really is quite a difficult thing to do. Here's Nathan to Bell Drummond, who's forward and defends straight to cover. Yeah, it's quite a hard one to know. How do you, A, explain what do we mean by playing the ball late, and then B, actually being able to execute it, because how late is late and sometimes players think they're playing the ball late but they're still playing it a yard early so understanding the correct drills and how to practice making sure your contact point is correct L on live radio the only way i could describe it and i'll um well you can tell that after this delivery from snater is this time a slightly back of the length delivery and bell drummond just punches it to mid on it brings up the end of the sixth over 11 for one is the score the only way I could describe it really is if you play a drive I'm trying, I'm trying to explain how to play the ball later if you play a drive and you plant your foot and play the shot then you're often reaching for the ball you're trying to make contact but it's further away from your body than we would ultimately like if you allow the ball to come 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 towards the batsman further you can then strike the ball almost underneath your eye line so in effect you're playing it maybe two foot later instead of playing it out on a out in front of you where you're stretching to feel for the ball you're allowing the ball to travel that much further and playing under your eye line so you're playing the ball later and if it does move slightly you have that two foot of time to adjust to try and hit the middle rather than the edge when you're stretching for the ball would your father be happy with that description <laughs> As Porter's in around the wicket to Dixon, who drives, who punches down the ground. He's looking for two, but his partner running to the, the striker's end has turned him down. And rightly so. That was a really nice, caressed, calculated, just a push shot down the ground for one run. And the thing is, you can't actually play the ball late if you have planted your entire foot straight away. So What do you mean planted? There'll be a few people listening. So... If we're going to break up the shot, when we take our front foot out and stride towards the ball, ideally you look to land on your heel and then transfer your weight through to your toes. Porter in, out off the back foot, Bell Drummond turns the single down. So you go heel to toe landing and there's a lot of the time, especially younger players, that when they land, they will land with their full foot. But ideally if you can delay your weight transfer at that point, that will help you play the ball later. As soon as you plant your foot, that allows or tells your body you start to bring your hands down and the momentum's already started going and you can't really pull back at that point. Porter from the Graham Gooch end, bowls a little straight. I think it comes off the pad, but there's no shout, possibly going down, but square leg filled. So that is uh, Feroz Kushi at square leg, no run. Yeah, so it's almost you're committed to wherever you plant your foot and then frequently the problems about planting your foot if you don't wait to see the line and you've planted your foot you then start to play around your front pad which then makes you become an LBW candidate and this time that's a nice shot he hasn't planted his foot but he's caressed that has bell drumming into the mid wicket where it's run away for two runs that was a lovely time shot that beautifully timed and i think that's something that a lot of the international players from the subcontinent do so well especially against spin 
And that's why they're so dominant against spin is that they really understand when to allow that weight transfer. They don't plant their foot so early. And against spin, it's really important that you don't, otherwise you'll be stuck. Porter bowls nice and straight. The ball's played, rightly so. He hasn't whipped it. Porter's bowling straight, but Bell Drummond's played to mid-wicket, who's wearing a snood. The man who scored a, an undefeated century last evening. Jordan Cox, formerly of Kent. Gosh, he did play very well square of the wicket, especially on the long boundary towards the flats and the old hospital side here at Chelmsford. He did play well. Quick hands. Good player. Good signing for Essex. Porter bowls. There's a nick. It goes along the floor to Dean Elgar at first slip. And he's hurt his finger as he's running off. Oh dear. We hope that's not a anything too bad. A fracture or... No, it's not. He's not. He's gone to see the 12th man who's wrapped up who's got a pair of shin pads because I think I suggested look what's happening. I'm an over two late aren't I I suggested Harmer would be on bowling in place of Snater after two overs I think it's in fact after four overs yep it's going to be a bit sorry of three overs oh. Harmer I would I would have agreed with this an over before Snater didn't do anything wrong he bowled well with the new ball he made Kent play most deliveries he bowled an absolute jaffer that bounced with the new ball but Harmer bowling to the left-handed Ben Compton is the right match-up. And indeed, there could be a little bit of turn. And Harmer will want, importantly, the new ball. Because the new ball will extract a little bit more turn, maybe. And certainly a bit more bounce. And the one thing spinners love... It's a bit of bounce. Is bounce. Embury, Edmonds. Harmer's a very tall man. And he will extract bounce against Compton, I'm sure. So a slip, a bat pad on the offside, a pad bat on the leg side. And we're ready for Harmer to bowl. Here he comes from the Alistair Cook end and he's round the wicket. And oh, there's a big appeal. There's a shout. And... Gone for two dismissals there, haven't they? Yep. They've, they've gone, gone for an LB and a, the ball balloon to slip. Yeah, but I'm not really sure where Compton was going with that shot, if I'm honest with you. He was whipping it. Here's Harmer again, and this time, this one's a last-minute decision from Compton to yeah. let that go. And That was good, wasn't it? That was watchful. Watchful. Going to have to have a plan here against Harmer. It's going to be a little trickier than it was day two. Harmer's in again, and Compton looks to sweep. I believe he's just got a little bit of glove on it, but not enough that he's going to be able to get a run as it's gone pretty fine and we have a 45 covering the, the area Harmer's bowling with two men in front of the eye line of Ben Compton and he will be aware of those they're staying low he's in again and this time just a slightly fuller delivery and Compton's forward and defends Compton, one of two centurions in the first innings. Both these guys got centuries. My word, he nearly, nearly carried his bat. He was the last man out in Kent's first innings. Hummer in round the wicket, this time just played into the onside. They'll pick up a single as mid-wicket makes their way round to do the fielding. And this brings Bell Drummond on to strike. Are we going to have the same field for Bell Drummond? Mm -hmm. Might not have the offside fielder under the lid. I would, but Harmer will wait for a little bit. Looks Daniel Bell is quite strong through the leg side. He might find there's a short mid-wicket. And... We have a leg slip. There is. A short mid-wicket. So there's your four catches. A conventional slip, leg slip. Uh, bat pad on the leg side under the lid. And... Tom Wesley, the captain, is short mid-wicket. He does play into that area and he'll play with the spin. Here's Harmer to Bell Drummond, who uses his feet, advances down the track mm. and defends solidly to bring up the end of the eighth over. 15 for one is the score. Well but played that last delivery, wasn't it? Yeah. He, got, he came forward, smothered the spin, played it with soft hands. Got right to the pitch of the ball. He did. He so did. Going back to what we were speaking about just a couple an over ago about teaching 
young players, how do you hit the ball late? What's your what would be your go-to drill? Right, ah, feeding, f- underarm feeds. Okay, if you're a slightly older, maybe uh, adult men, you could do overarm feeds. But you need to play the ball later under your eye line. Um, tall people enjoy a long reach, so sometimes they do play the ball a little early by reaching for the ball, playing it well in front of them as porters around the wicket, this time uh, a, a full face of the bat to short mid on where there is no run. So I can only suggest just throwing thousands and thousands of balls and just trying to get the, the bat batter to play the ball later under, try and make the contact with the ball under your eye line not out in front of you. I hope we've explained that reasonably well. I hope we have indeed, as Porter's on his way in, two slips, nice and straight, and um, Ben Compton is really saying, get past that. Like a, you know, full face of the bat, soft hands, just playing very correct and straight from where it has come from nice he's you know he knows that if he can bat and bat in these this session and the next session then Kent will save this game and prevent Essex with a second successive win this time it's forced off the back foot through the vacant covers area it races across the netting area here square of the wicket and he collects four runs good shot the score moves to 19 for one and Compton goes to six Bell Drummond on date, and uh, that was a nice shot. Yeah, very good looking shot from him. He has so many drills out there that you could look to do to try and figure out how you can just adjust your contact point. What, what's the quickest way? I don't think there is a quick way to do it, is there? No, practice, practice, practice. This time there's an LBW shout and he's been given! Uh, Compton's uh, not so happy, but he's going to have to go. My first reaction when I saw it, I was quite excited and I thought that looked fairly good, but Compton's not so happy. But Essex and Porter have got Kent's second wicket, 19 for two. And Porter, as he did yesterday morning with the new ball, he has struck. He's a dangerous opening bat, uh, bowler here because he makes people play. Well bowled, Jamie Porter. Well bowled indeed, and Compton is going to have to depart after scoring six in the second innings. Such an important, Nikki, wicket for, for Essex. Very important wicket. I use the analogy or the, or the description. He's like a barnacle attaching himself to the ship at sea. He just can't, you can't get rid of him. He's stuck on underneath the hull and he has been such, so effective for Kent that they do rely on him and he's just a brilliant batsman, rear guard or just, he doesn't worry about pressure he doesn't worry about the situation he just gets stuck in it's like he's just in his own bubble and yes. all his job his job is yes. just to bat the longest period of time as he can he did a very good job of it yesterday as well after scoring 165 well people around the country will be going oh porter's done well with the new ball as um, and has reduced kent to 19 for two um, and these guys just put 15 runs on together and it brings Jack Leaning who's had a sorry about the pun he's had a lean start to the season so far as two slips and a leg slip wait and there's a nick and it's been dropped by Simon Harmer at second slip now he has buckets as hands and it is it's it's a collection item that to see him drop the catch he went one-handed he may have been able to go two-handed but he went one-handed and it didn't stick it was around shin height my word that's a collector's item there a drop by simon harmer leaning survives and he could have been on a hat-trick 
Jamie Porter. Porter in. This time it's a beautiful delivery. Played back to the bowler on his follow through. And leaning. Can he make Essex pay? Simon Harm was not happy with himself. That's safe to say. It was not even really much of a difficult catch. It was in his hand. It was just in and out in an instance. And I'm... I'm just going to blame the snood. Is that what you call it? The snood? Snood. The snood. Yeah. I'm going to blame the snood. Maybe snood. it just got in his vision. I, I, I reckon there might be a few snoods <laughs> on the club grounds this weekend because I think a majority of amateur cricket starts this weekend. If it's not the league, it will be a friendly game if there's ever such a thing. And I'm pretty sure there will be lots mm -hmm. of hand warmers out this weekend as well. Yes. Good luck to everyone if you are going to play. Harmer, can he, can he rectify what just happened? In he, he is past the umpire and this one slightly down the leg side. Bell Drummond mm. looks to work it into the onside. It goes straight into the gloves. Honestly, he has hands like cornflake boxes. They are enormous. Other... <laughs> Cereals are available. Here's Harmon. Beldrum uses his feet this time down the track and defends once again. Hands like cornflake boxes. I have never heard that analogy. Haven't you? No. That's why you get so much purchase on the ball. He has large hands. Here's Harmer. Slightly flighted delivery. Beldrummond's forward and defends into the offside. He's the size of a number eight. And he was good. He was good at rugby in his South African upbringing. And I said on commentary yesterday, very rarely knocks on. Well, he knocked on at second slip just now. It's Harman to Bell Drummond, played off the back foot and fielded off his own bowling as well. 64 overs are the order of the day for Essex to try and force a win or for Kent to save the game. But we might find if the spinners... Harmer and Critchley bowl a lot, we might find we bowl a few more than 64. Here's Harmer to Beldrum and this time just turned into the leg side. It's going to be running down to the vacant square leg area. They'll pick up a single. And this brings Jack Leaning on to strike. I look towards Matt to see if he may be ready in an over or two. No? Five minutes. He's very good, not a problem. Harmer, waiting. So, conventional slip, leg slip, man under the lid on the leg side, and Wesley at short mid wicket. Here's Harmer to Gleaning, who leans into his front foot defence to bring up the end of the over. 10 overs gone, 20 for 2 is the score, and the sun is making an appearance again at the ground. And I can't say the wind has died down though, but. As long as it's sunny, we can't complain. Do you know what? I'm sitting down. You're standing up. If you sat down, you're actually in the sun's rays. You might be even warmer. I'm standing up so I can keep myself moving. Can you? Yeah. Is it that cold? I am rather chilly. Really? I'm quite cold. Well, Porter to continue. Two wickets has the Essex main man and two slips and a leg slip are waiting as Porter bowls. This is driven into the leg side. Bell Drummond marches down the wicket in order to try and get a single. Turns it down as it goes to mid on. Good shot for no run. Um, Porter's bowling straight again, isn't he? If there's something you're going to take away from this visit, your first visit to Chelmsford to watch Essex, you, you would say that Porter bowls incredibly straight. He makes the batsman play, doesn't he? He's on his way in, into the offside. Looks for a quick single to Beldrum and turns it down. Rightly so. Gosh, Essex could, could have had Kent 20 for three. Always looking to make the batter play. And as Mick mentioned yesterday whilst he was up here in the box, no pretty bowling. Isn't that yeah, what you mentioned? He said, that's right. We don't want our bowlers to be bowling pretty balls. We want Mick Lewis, Essex bowling coach, did you enjoy that chat? I thoroughly enjoyed that chat. It was a great... You describe that in a minute. Pretty bowling as Porter's in. And to the front foot. Nice top of off. And Chris Silverwood, Mickey Lewis, always says, 
the top of off never moves the top of off stump mm. never moves aim for that so what's this pretty bowling he <laughs> termed it so I think what he was trying to say is obviously if we keep bowling that fourth fifth stump channel for the batter whether able to leave it c continuously apart from it being a dot in the book we're not really getting anywhere Porter in bowls a nice delivery Bell Drummond comes out on the uh, front foot and plays off the splice of the bat good bowling top of off again from Porter into the offside no run but if we're seeing bowlers bowl like what they currently are now as Porter is with his current line where the batter is forced to play they have to play there's no real option at the moment to be leaving those deliveries because they're too straight on him Absolutely. Well said. Well described as Porter's on his way in. This is another good delivery. Nice and straight. Pitched up. Bell Drummond can only just push it back past the bowler, but mid-on stops the single. And as long as you're bowling at the batter where you're forcing them to play, it's really down to the batter. Just one mistake and then you've got them. Just like we nearly had that third wicket. Unfortunately, Jack Leaning was put down at second slip just a few balls ago. I agree with Mick and I agree with you on that Porter in right arm over another good delivery is played nice and straight bold nice and straight played up to mid on end of a good over testing over not full of pace and as Mick Lewis said yesterday on commentary when he was talking about his charges and his duties you don't necessarily have to be the quickest it's not about pace all the time I sometimes feel that England in the last 10 years have always searched for more and more pace but uh, you know when I think of some of the Chaminda Vass, a left arm swing bowler Sri Lanka, Zahir Khan Jimmy Anderson and, you know Jimmy Anderson will be lauded forever and a day and rightly so he's not the fastest on the circuit Ollie Robinson Here's Harmer to Leaning, who uses his feet, advances down the track and plays this to mid on, wide enough that they'll be able to pick up a single, bringing Bell Drummond back on to, tr back on to strike. Now, I completely agree with you. There's not much point being super fast if you can't be landing your ball on the money. No, or you don't do much with the ball. Exactly. Here's Harmer to Bell Drummond, who's mm. forward, but decides not to play it this one as it slides down the leg side. Mm. now Beard's loosing up beneath us whether he will replace Porter I would let Snater have a short spell here's Harmer and Beldrum is forward this time full face of the bat defends it straight back down Beard has had a chequered career after a few injuries when he was a young cricketer he had a couple of back operations Harmer in again, Bell Drummond off the back foot, mm. looks to cut, it stays low, it might have been too close to cut as well. And it's straight into the gloves of Pepper. Mm, bit of a dangerous shot that against the off spinner who's bringing it back for Bell Drummond. This time again down the track and Better. gets to the pitch of the ball, defends. It probably squeezed that, but it was safely squeezed between the bat and the pad into the offside there isn't anyone under the lid that's the other area that they could find someone or we're just for harmers thinking about that in comes harmer again baldrum and uses his feet advances down the track and drives straight to bid at mid on it will bring up the end of the 12th over can 21 for two good over just the one ball that went down the leg side and uh, i'm going to leave you so i'm is it my turn or your turn? You're, oh, yes, yes. Nikki, you're going to disappear for a bit and then join us back in, say, 10 minutes. Good over from Harmer as uh, Aaron Beard takes over from Jamie Porter. Jamie Porter, I'll just have a quick look at his figures. Uh, welcome back, Matt Cole. Do, would you like to take this over? Two for seven off six overs and four maidens, oh, Jamie Oh, I Porter. love that. I love that. Just uh, Bowled nicely, didn't he? Really nicely, he, yeah. he bowled a first over with three which were pushed down the leg side and he didn't finish his arms off. 
But since that first over, which obviously for me would be a loosener, he's bowled nicely and straight and caused Kent a few issues. Aaron Beard into the attack. Two slips, a man at short mid-wicket. Aaron Beard needs to bowl a good spell here. Yeah, huge task for Kent to see them off here. Jack leading, bat held high to start. A bit a la Graham Gooch, I would say. I'm in the right place yes. to say that, aren't I? With a name you at are. the far end named after him. This is I propelled into the onside. Cushy Fields at square leg, no run. I think you're right there, but Just may I the say he... I, 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 I'm, yeah, Graham Gooch was, stood very upright. Yep. His bat was quite high, but Leaning's bat is even high, I would say. Yep. You ready for this? He could be a right-handed Brian Lara. <gasps> He He's wouldn't mind being compared to him at the end of his career, <laughs> let alone now. I have to say that. But Only yeah, in stance. <laughs> his beard to uh, leaning. Needs to channel that for Kent fans, that's for sure. This is uh, uh, just defended into the offside and there's no run. As it's uh, fielded, I think, by Simon. Oh, no, Simon Harmer's in the, uh, in the slip cordon there with uh, Dean Elgar. Who am I looking at? Matt Critchie, there we go. He's also a big lad, isn't he, Matt Critchie? Yes, he is. People don't realise that. I'm not sure that. he'd make a number eight but like no. Simon Harmer. But, uh, no, uh, Critchie, I reckon, yeah, I reckon Critchie would be a very good centre, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Crash ball. Modern centre, there we go, as Beard bowls to leaning. Nice confidence from leaning, coming forward and driving up to mid-off and there's no rum. Um, what a start from Essex, though. 21 for 2. Yeah, it is. And Harmer, I suggested he might be into the attack earlier. He was uh, over later than I anticipated. And Critchley may be introduced as well. Um, yeah. You know, maybe after Beard or even if Snater had another little go. But I do think he will extract some turn from his wrist spin. Beard to leaning, left outside the off stump, didn't need to play. That one of the rare deliveries, Mickey Lewis was saying, wasn't he? You want to make them play, you want it on the stumps, you want to keep the ball in play. Very impressed with his attack, as I'm sure the Essex fans are as well. The spinners will be even more so. You cannot just leave and leave, can you, against Simon Harmer and Matt Critchley, that combination. And um, as I said, this Essex attack, the team as a whole, I'm going with my Swiss Army knife analogy. There's something for every situation here, Essex. Beard now will bowl to Leaning, who does lean forward, goes outside the off stump, or pitches outside the off stump, comes a little bit back at Leaning, but not prodigiously. If anything was going to bring Simon Halmer into the attack quickly, for me, Don, it was that ball from Shane Snater that exploded off a length just outside the off stump. Was that his the first, first over? In the first over, yeah. yes. Yeah, I remember. And if you're the bowling coach or if you're the captain, you're thinking, finger spinner of uh, Simon Harmer's fantastic talent, get him to get the ball to grip and bounce, could be devastating. Here is uh, Beard to leaning, clips that off his pad, he's played around his front pad, so a few gulps and yelps from the, uh, the fielding unit, but uh, he tucks that away for a single, is it just one? Yes indeed. And uh, we've got a club very kindly have a camera uh, on the scoreboard for us. But uh, you have to be, you have to cross your eyes and look at it sideways because the, the wind is blowing it so hard. It's, uh, it's flying around there. 22 for two, uh, Kent, though. That doesn't make good reading, even if it isn't easy reading uh, for, uh, for us here in the commentary box. Uh, Jamie Porter, as he did in the first innings, Don, taking the first two wickets and taking them quickly as well. Well... I've received on uh, the BBC Essex Cricket at gmail.com, mm. BBC Essex Cricket at gmail.com, the, the first contribution reference, uh, the very sad news of Derek Underwood. Yeah. Stephen Toakley um, says, Good afternoon, team. He says, Really sad news about Derek Underwood. For Kent, I remember him being exceptionally miserly and effective in the old Sunday League 40 over competition. Yeah. A key part of that very successful Kent side. I'm too young to remember his heroics at the Oval in 1968, but remember him running through the Aussies four years later in 1972 at Leeds to seal the retention of the Ashes. Condolences to his family. And indeed, his friends. Thank you, Stephen. Stephen Toakley, um, an Essex fan. Um, so if you've got memories of Derek Underwood, we would love to hear from we you. really would. Kentcricket at gmail.com as well, on the emails. 
Harmer in bowls outside off stump and uh, comes back and is played into the leg side with the spin from Harmer and there is no run 22 for two yeah, Mike Alexander from Northland, and great to hear from you, Mike, saying what struck me most about Derek was the, the fact that he appeared to adopt the best of spin and brisk medium pace. And when you try and describe him, he's, the, he's taken more wickets than any other England spinner in, in history, I know, but, it, but as Mike points out, Harmer bowls and it's forced off the back foot, no run. He was that mixture, wasn't he? He could... Oh, he could bowl at a, at a, a really brisk pace, uh, particularly on those uh, those drying pitches, rain affected pitches. Yeah, the the yeah, absolutely. Those wet wickets which county cricket had in the 60s and 70s. He almost bowled kind of cutters as Harmer's in again bowls, and this is uh, smothered by leaning very sensibly. It gets to the pitch of the ball, doesn't allow it to move, and it goes into the offside where Dean Elgar does the fielding. Harmer, right arm over the wicket, gives it a bit of air. Little bit of interest then as well, but alas, not out. Decent bit of bowling. We have a great view here where we can see how Harmer varies his pace, varies his trajectory as he bowls again. A little bit more loop driven and goes into the leg side i think it was dragged across with a big bottom hand from leaming and there is no run yeah please get in touch about memories of derek underwood i i have actually quite a lot um charming man would always go out of his way to have a conversation this is played down into the leg side and there is no run there was a bit of an appeal yep. good over from armor 22 for two fantastic photo here i know this is radio but i'll do my best mark uh, on the emails to uh, to do it justice he says my favorite cricket photo deadly bowling against australia at the oval 1968 yes. you can see every fielder in the picture with derek underwood appealing and the umpire putting his finger up yes. out you can see with all, the, all the 11 basically within that within that one frame famous picture i remember that one and you sense the sawdust <laughs> everywhere <laughs> all over wasn't the, it was that the, was that the one at the oval is the oval yeah, yeah the oval yeah yeah that the, i think you should re tweet that picture it's later because i think it's an iconic well. picture of the ashes of the oval of the wet wicket didn't didn't the the, the fans and the ticket holders go out and help dry the wicket and coincidentally we were talking about that earlier weren't we this we is were. uh, before we'd heard the very sad news it's uh, yeah. beard bowling to uh, bell drummond and he defends this one into the offside and Mark's also say that, uh, shown a, uh, sent us a picture of a signed printer, Kent 11 for all seasons, yeah. uh, with a number of the legends having signed, including I, I, uh, Derek Underwood. Come on, Fantastic. name some of those legends. Luckus, Dines, Cowdery, Alan Elam. I think he's on the picture. There we go. Um, Andrew has been in touch. Great to hear from you, Andrew, as well. Kentcricket at gmail.com. That's uh, so a lovely shot from Danny Belldrum, and he's uh, on top of the bounce there and driven it into the offside. And it'll be two. They may come back for three. Jack Leaning <laughs> thinks yeah, about yeah. it. I don't think yeah. this is a time to go for a risky third. No. Uh, for Kent, they move on to 24 for two. 11 for Beldrum and two for Leaning. This is just in uh, titled Deadly in inverted commas. He says, what a sad, sad day for cricket, does Andrew. One of the greatest players I've had the pleasure of meeting, watching and truly admiring. I used to be uh, desperate to carry his or not his bags into the pavilion <laughs> at Canterbury, Dover or Folkestone in the early 80s. That's Beard Bowles. Keeps a little bit low. Daniel Bell Drummond blocks it out. Uh, he says, and managed both on several occasions. <laughs> Did you, Andrew? Fantastic. The mm. rush to the boot of the players' cars was mm. a sight to behold, he said. A yeah. true gentleman, absolute legendary proponent on a damp wicket by pushing the ball through. Feared on the county circuit and internationally. Certainly all the family played us thoughts uh, with his family and all Kent friends. Uh, Andrew, that so beautifully put, Andrew. I think yeah. of all the tributes that have been paid to, to Derek Underwood, a lovely personal a tribute which I know will resonate with many, many people. Drive into the offside by Daniel Bell Drummond. Good shot. Uh, that's admirable too. Uh, in for four runs. But Andrew Plater, thank you so much for that. Beautifully said, sir. And yep. uh, I said it will really resonate as much about the man as about the, 
about his talent. Yeah. Um, that's how he was known at, at uh, Canterbury and beyond. Yeah. He retired, I think it was 84, 85 from Kent Cricket. Yeah, three decades he played. What, was it the a, county. a year before Alan Knott? I believe his beard to Beldrum leaves that one looking up good paces in the Aaron Beard from the far end but uh, through the wicketkeeper no run 28 for 2 Kent as I like to say on these occasions I will say uh, Don uh, on this scoreboard it's the final figure that matters the most 28 doesn't really matter the 2 matters Essex mm. want 8 more Kent want to mm. protect them final day for me uh, I'm just wondering whether whether Beard might be rested after this and that's nothing against him I just want to see Critchley into the attack yeah it's just in his second over here oh, that one does rise spitefully on Daniel Bell Drummond who sees it off I think with glove almost top of the bat into the onside good finish to the over from Aaron Beard he has two overs no maiden none for seven that Simon Harmer will I was going to say will continue I thought for a moment someone else was handing his cap mm. uh, over but I think uh, no, that's, uh, it is going to be Simon Harmer once again. It, it's really, it, emotionally, if you're Aaron Beard, and, and this is no disrespect to him, that you're going to say, put your hand on his shoulder and say, Aaron, listen, just have a blow for a minute. I want to try the leggy. Mm. He's gutted. Aaron Beard will be gutted because he wants to bowl. Snater will want to bowl. Porter will have a little rest after his early burst. As Harmer bowls from the Sir Alistair Cook end, he bowls, it's fought into the leg side. They're going to take one run as it goes towards deep mid wicket where it's fielded beneath the uh, pavilion balcony. One run. Um, it's all about trying to open the door, get some wickets to put Kent under pressure. Kent have got to cope with this pressure. And these two batsmen in particular, Bell Drummond plays off the back foot, a slightly quicker ball from Harmer, no run. Well, we talked about that deadly Derek Underwood field. Essex aren't quite there yet, but it's not far off, is it? No. Uh, Daniel Bell Drummond absolutely surrounded by close fielders at the moment. We've got a man under the lid yeah. on the offside now, so four round the back. Bat. This goes is squeezed out sensibly. I think it wasn't intentionally, but it nonetheless was safe because he played it with such soft hands as Bell Drummond picks up to as the slip, which is in the snood that's I think it's Critchley had to retreat to short might. fine leg uh, beg your pardon I think you're right short yeah. third man sorry as Harmer's in again a bit more of a loop this does grip and turn into the leg side no run I think the visible man slip there we can't see any of his body I think he's Jordan Cox is that right in the just that slip now that slip is it yeah you could see he's got the hand under the there. helmet he's I think the hand in. yeah I think you're right well spotted, eagle-eyed Matt Cole, BBC Kent, who has spotted that. Harmer bowls and the ball is played with soft hands and it slowly and slowly returns to the bowl and no run. Bell Drummond coping with four men round the bat. Harmer bowls, comes down the wicket. There's an LBW appeal. He's marched down the wicket. I have to say that didn't look right to me. Harmer... Gets on his left knee and asks the question. He's now chatting to the umpire. The umpire's not interested. He calls over. Goodish over. 31 for two. And Bell Drummond has 17. Jack leaning there to face on three. I don't know what you think, Tom, but in Simon Harmer's favour there, it's hit him very low, even though he's come forward They're a long forward, way, yeah. down, Daniel Bell Drummond. Just but look it's, not it's out. tricky for the umpire to give though isn't it it, it is did. that far down the pitch but yes yeah. yeah we're not in line here Matt are we and no that's that's entirely true <laughs> difficult to give them from uh, from third uh, man but uh, it is beard to continue Captain Don Topley mm, has gone against about me. a bowling change but he's working up ahead of steam as Aaron Beard and wants to repay as captain as uh, leaning that's a very very good shot through the offside lovely cover drive it might not reach the boundary. Of course, we've had some rain, mm. so the boundary's holding up. They'll um, jog a three. That's how well hit it was. And uh, a triumvirate of uh, Essex fielders go after it. And yeah. uh, it's coming back shortly. But yeah, three runs to the total, 34 for two. The wind is so hard now, there are four fielding helmets behind Michael Pepper. 
the, uh, uh, yeah. the Essex Wicket Gosh. Keeper, and one of them, Helmet 4, all in a row, has, uh, has just rolled away uh, because uh, the wind's blowing so hard. Am I being silly? But if the ball hit one, two, oh, three, yeah. I don't four, know. what happens? Is that 20 runs? <laughs> <laughs> Is it... I've no idea. Hey, four helmets are behind the keeper. I mean, it should be five, five runs, is that right? But yeah. yes, I yeah. don't know. Gosh, would, it be, would it be like pinball? Yeah, well, billions. The score will just yeah. go, go rattling up. What if it yeah. hits one and comes back onto yeah. it? I don't know. His beard to a bell drummond. He's bowling at a good pace, isn't he, beard? And he is. We didn't really see this. Where's Agar accepted with the, the Kent attack? We didn't see the batters having to get into position quickly, just having to hurry themselves like we have with Aaron Beard here, I don't think. It's a really slow wicket here at Chelmsford. Yeah. Often is slow, but this is slow. And that's no disrespect to the groundsman. And we've even had plenty of rain in yeah. these parts, which is one of the driest parts of England. That's Beard bowls to uh, Bell Drummond. He's a little bit late, up to mid-on, but gets a solid bat behind it and there's no run. Mickey Lewis is saying he's not obsessed with pace, is he? No. Not obsessed, he's, he's obsessed with the quality rather yes. than the, uh, the speed of the delivery. Well, yeah, if you look at, I was saying to Nicky earlier, Jimmy Anderson, you know, um, Zahir Khan. Yeah. I mean, there are some wonderful medium fast or fast medium bowlers in world cricket. It's Beard Bowls to Bell Drummond. Just drops the hands on that into the offside and they'll take a single. He used a word, and I think I've got the wrong one, but it was something like those deliveries from quick bowlers which, uh, which pitch probably just outside off and they go past the outside stump and they go, uh, the, the, the off stump, they go really quickly into the, into the wicket he was had. Did he call it decoration or something? No, what was the, what he was called the word? it... Pretty, pretty bowling, bowling. That's, right. that's right. Yeah. Well done, Nicky. Um, yeah, pretty bowling. Some, someone was paying but attention. Not, <laughs> not, necess not necessarily effective, yes. but outside off, through to the keeper. Yeah. Wow, it was yeah. quick, but it was ineffective. It was just a dot ball. <laughs> not one for the pretty bowling. It's a beard bowls to lean. That's a very crisp shot from Jack Leaning, who had a lovely cover drive uh, in the previous over. Uh, he's only going to get two for this one. He's going to do a lot of running if he wants runs here as uh, longest part of the ground but nicely hit off a foolish delivery that's flicked on a half volley through uh, out to mid wicket fielded and they'll take two more and it's 37 for two now uh, Kent um, I have to correct myself actually Jamie Porter didn't take the first two wickets of the Kent innings he took the first two yesterday in quick succession um, Messrs Bell Drummond and Leaning and, uh, but he took the first two today uh, took Mie and Compton very quickly too to give his side the advantage as this one's defended into the offside no run right that's going to be the end of me I'm going to welcome right. back <laughs> Ooh, uh, welcome back uh, Nikki, Nikki Chowdhury, Chowdhury into the commentary box gotcha. and I'm going to predict yeah Matt Critchley is right. going to be an, on at the far end and it's an over too late we <laughs> will see um I think now with Dawn that if Critchley doesn't come on the next over, just to make that prediction come true, he'll march out into the middle and, and tell Tom Wesley it has to happen. So uh, we will see. So, Harmer, uh, from this... A river end to Daniel Beldrum and it's defended away into the offside, fielded by Luke Benkenstein and there will be uh, no run. Daniel Beldrum and you've got him surrounded. I like to say X marks the spot really because if you had a drone footage above that you could draw an X through uh, Michael Pepper in the middle, the wicket keeper. You've got a man at forward short leg, you've got a man short, uh, almost a silly point, you've got a leg slip and a conventional slip as well. All for company. Tom Wesley himself, the captain, is on the drive at mid-wicket. Attack, attack, attack for Essex. That's a good delivery from Armour. That looked like it turned as well. And Daniel Veldrummond has taken the bottom hand off the bat as he defends it into the onside. And there is no run. This is uh, cat and mouse cricket to me, Nicky Chowdhury, at this point. Here's uh, Armour. I'll get your thoughts on that in a second. Round the wicket to Daniel Veldrummond. Comes down the pitch. Gets back to it. Armour has head in hands. But this is classic spinners battle, isn't it, on the final day against a, a batter? It is, it is indeed. I wish there was some way that we could 
show our listeners what this looks like right now. Yeah, we're trying to distill the excitement, if not, down the uh, down the airways. His uh, bell drum getting well forward again. I mean, as he plays that away, he's almost face to face with Dean Elgar. He's so <laughs> close on the other side because he's come outside down the pitch outside the off stump, and he's played it past Elgar, um, but almost hockey fashion, really, there, isn't he? Because he's so close to him. It's Harm around the wicket once again, looking for Perch. Oh, swing and a miss from Danny Bader and must go. And does, he's pinned. It didn't look good from here. A little bit of a hole from Danny Bader and looks down the pitch towards the umpire. I mean, height was definitely not an issue there. He's gone for an extravagant sweep that has trapped him in front. Danny Bader does not look happy. He's not usually one to show any kind of... Uh, is he just looking back for the replay? And uh, at first look here, I have to say we are at a widish long off here. Certainly a beat in the bat as he s tried to sweep that away. But he wants to look at the uh, the replay. Um, as I also often say on these occasions, it's the umpire that counts. The umpire is in line. He's given Daniel Bell Drummond out. And that is a key wicket for Essex. Three down now, Kent, for 37. Seven more wickets needed for Essex to try and blow Kent away as they did against Nottinghamshire last week for their second win of the county championship but they've had a good start they've had a great start and they've got two key wickets this afternoon Ben Compton was dismissed earlier for six and now Bell Drummond as well was dismissed for I believe was it eight 18 18 yeah. yes 18 so two key batsmen for Kent who scored hundreds in the first innings failed well you can say failed in comparison really couldn't you yeah failed in the second innings and Essex are in a very good position, a strong dominant position right now as we've got, I feel like we're getting more men around the bat. Are we? <laughs> they, they added another, I think Tom Wesley has come a little bit closer at mid wicket. He has. Um, Matt Critchley is coming, oh no, he was already at leg slip, wasn't he? But uh, it's uh, uh, J.L. Denley, Joe Denley coming out at number five for Kent, 37 for three. They are in some trouble here, Kent. And Essex will scent possible victory here now. As Denley defends this last ball here from Simon Harbour. He'll get good applause from, uh, it's not a bad crowd considering the weather we've had, I have to say here. Not quite as fulsome as the first three days, but they'll be enjoying most of them, what they're seeing here. Six overs, two maidens, one for six, Simon Harmer. Yeah, so a decent crowd in for a Monday afternoon as well. Yeah. So especially just in front of the changing rooms. Looks a little bit busy over there. Well, and the sun is basking onto that side of the stand as well, which always makes it nicer to watch cricket in. The sun is basking into the score box. In, not into the score box. Where are we? The commentary the box, box right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Although we do have a heater here as well. We it's, have it's, a heater. It's very we pleasant. <laughs> yeah. It's toasty. <laughs> toasty. Toasty. Just how I like it. The snoods are still on. It's not that warm yet for no. the players to get rid of them. In, in the middle there is a bitter wind, isn't there, blowing across there. You want to protect your hands, certainly. Very happy to... sat up here. <laughs> I can tell you that. I'm very happy what, sat up What rather than playing, there. yep. On a day like this, I can understand that. And I think it's going to be a bit of snater from the Graham Gooch end. As he comes into leaning, who leaves this one alone outside the off stump. Indeed, it's the it's sort of slight mullet, has he, Shane Snater? That's sort of shaved at the sides, and is that right? Did you ever have a mullet? Um, probably close to an original one back in the day, oh, so wow. that, that dates me, but yeah. Certainly longer hair. I'm not sure it's quite a mullet, but uh, not in the modern fashion. Not quite as uh, streamlined as Shane Snater's. Well, it makes him easy to identify as in he comes, runs past the umpire and this time leanings forward, defends to cover. Yeah, never went quite full mullet, never quite the short with the long, but there we go. But uh, Sounding trendy, man. I'm not a defic no, not, a, not a, a dedicated follower of fashion, unfortunately, so never that... Uh, you don't need to follow fashion, fashion. you are fashion. <laughs> <laughs> Can I say that's the first time anyone's ever said that to me? <laughs> You'd be very surprised to hear. Well, we'll get more of it next week when I'm down with you in Canterbury as well. As here comes Snater and 
This time leaning against Bold! He's lost his off stump. A brilliant delivery there from Snater and Kent. They're in a little bit of trouble. They've just lost their fourth wicket. 37 for four. Jack leaning departs after scoring just eight runs. Yeah, they are yeah, in a deep trouble, I would say now. They've got a long tail, Kent, as well, once you're past uh, Jaden Denley at seven. He's making his debut. It is, uh, looks very thin indeed and looks even thinner when Essex are bowling like this. So uh, what was Don Topley saying? I mean, he's not here to, to tease him, but he was saying Critchley has to come on the far end. Snater came on the far end and got the wicket immediately. So there we go. But uh, goodness me, just shows the strength that, uh, that Essex have again in this bowling lineup. So Jack Leaning goes. I thought he looked pretty good. He was hitting the ball pretty crisply, but... He has been undone by Shane Snater. Essex have been bowling brilliantly. And they've been reaping the rewards from it slowly as well. Lots lots to handle now for Jaden Denley, though. He's got a lot to do. Yeah, absolutely. He's got a big responsibility. Uh, it's actually Harry Finch coming out at six. Jaden Denley will be at seven. Thank you, Barn. I got them uh, the wrong way around there. But, yeah, leaning goes. And... Kent have to protect these last six wickets or they are going to go home maybe early doors this afternoon and the only benefit of that is that you might not get stuck on the crossing I don't think Kent or Essex fans will be caring at all about my <laughs> journey home at this point <laughs> particularly not Kent fans but uh, uh, yeah in the 19th over 37 before um, this will not improve the mood in what was a very very solemn Kent dressing room last night. Here's Sean as Harry Finch just takes his guard and is now having a look around, assessing the field. And the field is changing. Maybe some swaps as we're going to have someone under the lid. That short leg as Finch is to face up against Snater. A slip, leg slip, short leg, a short catching mid wicket as in comes Snater and oh this one's kept low, he's nearly got another one through the gate there Snater, Harry Finch bending down, just I think in shock being, how did that delivery yeah. stay so low? I'm not sure either and it's going at some pace from Shane Snater as well, that is, I mean Harry Finch is very fortunate that that's not cleaned him up as well and at the moment from what we were saying for parts of this game has been a bit procedural bat dom dominating ball it's the opposite on the final day right now in his stance taps his bat in comes Snater and Finch is forward defends and it's picked up by short catching mid wicket all the fielders seem very up close to Harry Finch. Yeah, I'm sure they'll be giving him some helpful advice as well. I'm sure there'll be a few friendly words exchanged out there in the middle as well. Right up in their faces and a little bit intimidating, one could say. As here comes Snater at the top of his mark, turns and also now pulls out of his run up as the umpire signals dead ball because Harry Finch has decided that he's going to take a stroll to her yeah, square leg. There was a huge gust of wind there. I, I don't know if Harry Finch was just literally blown out of his stance or whether something's blown into his eye, but he apologised to everybody. I think they'll understand that. I don't think they'll mind it too much, Essex here. In a great mood at 37 for 4, Kent. We go again. Snater past the umpire and Finch is forward, drives elegantly through the offside. It's going to be chased by the man at point and they'll pick up a couple in the process. An easy two to add to the total. Harry Finch gets himself off the mark and the score moves to 37 for four to bring up the end of the 19th over. Unsurprisingly, Simon Harmel will continue one for six from his six. Shane Snater now has one for eight from his four. And for Kent, it's a pretty ugly reading. Mayeo caught by Pepper, bowled by Porter for none. Compton following him not long after LBW to the same scene bowler Daniel Bell drummond LBW Simon Harmer for 18 and Jack Leaning uh, was uh, bowled uh, by Snater uh, for 8 
uh, with uh, no addition to the score. That at 37 up for four, two added to the total now, 39 for four. And Joe Denley, he's been in many tricky situations for his club. Can he see them out of this one? They're in a deep hole at the moment. As they take a single, an indifferent running there, Harry Finch wasn't entirely sure. I think whether Joe Denley was just advancing down the pitch or onto the run, but the call worked in, in the end, and they've taken one. A bit of gardening by Joe Denley. Simon Harmer, who was getting through his overs yesterday and the day before, a rate of knots. Now, every delivery is a matter of calculation of tactics. Minute changes to the field as Harry Finch fa faces him for the first time in this, this innings. Harmer to Finch. Turns, definitely turns into the right-hander, but over the leg stump and through to wicketkeeper Pepper. And there's no run. He's going to grip into the right-hander here, Simon Harmer, and bounce as well. Absolute expert. Off-break bowler. Finch waits for this one, goes on a little bit with the arm and just defends it back foot off his off stump. So they hold once again as Harmer comes in, his fair hair being blown by the wind here. Finch on the back foot, just uh, deflects that away, plays it very deliberately out to Luke Benkenstein. Um, he's got even floppier hair if anything and they're all having their locks tousled, 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 blown by the wind anyway. As Harmer is around the wicket to Finch, comes down the pitch and drives, gets the pitch of that very well, and that's going for four in fact, lovely off drive. Joe Denny doesn't even bother backing up because he can see that one is going to the boundary. And Essex will go and retrieve the ball, hands in pockets as if they're a bit disgruntled, the Essex fielders, but none of it, they're very excited, their hands are freezing. <laughs> Everyone's hands are in their pockets right now. <laughs> Absolutely. I want to protect them just in case a sharp slip chance comes your way. Last ball, the 20th over. Kent 44 for four. Simon Harmer bowls it now. Finch on the back foot deflects it as far as Elgar, who sort of pats it back at uh, almost volleyball style towards the wicket, just in case Finch was out of his ground. He wasn't. End of the over. I'm off to update BBC Radio Kent. I'm going to have to work out how I'm going to break the bad news gently to them here. 44 for four. Thank you, Matt. We'll catch you back shortly once you've done your update. Yeah, even though the sun is out here, all the players have firmly placed their hands in their pockets. And doesn't look like they're going to be coming out anytime soon unless there's a ball headed their way. We're going to have Snater to continue from the Graham Gooch end. And it's going to be Denley to face. Currently just marking his guard and doing a little bit of gardening down the wicket, taking his time, there's plenty of time. Got a long time to bat, as in comes Nathan now from the top of his mark running into us. And this time Denley's forward into inside edge that runs down to fine leg, Pick up, picks up a single, bringing Harry Finch onto strike and the score is 44. For four. Got some young lads now joining us in the front of the stand. Got their Essex jumpers on, coming to support their side. Still the Easter holidays for some, unless they're missing school. Here's Snater in again, past the umpire. And this time. Finch is forward, solid in defence, full face of the bat, straight to extra cover. This Dean Elgar in his snood. Just looking at the field, we've got a slip, leg slip, short leg, catch, short catching mid wicket, short catching wideish mid wicket, mid on, extra cover, point, and a fine leg. As in comes Snater now, and this time Finch is forward, and again, 
Inside edge into the onside, runs down to fine leg, picks up a single. This is a very difficult afternoon for Kent. It was a difficult evening for the Score moves to 45. But Essex have been having a terrific morning. Got some key wickets of Ben Compton and Daniel Bell Drummond. Both who scored centuries in the first innings. Bell Drummond dismissed for 18 and Compton dismissed the score after scoring six this afternoon. Had a little bit of a delayed start due to the poor weather this morning. It was ferociously raining here in Chelmsford. As here's Snayton now and this time it's turned into the onside by Denley. No run. Elsewhere uh, in the game between Somerset and Surrey, Somerset batting on the fielded uh, the oval by, I believe, of, uh, Surrey, trying to bowl them out for the victory of their own. They're leading by uh, 165 runs now. It's pretty hard to identify the players right now. Seven. And they're all covered up, their faces covered up. You can just about make, see their eyes. Here's Snater again running into us, passes the umpire through his action, and this time Denley's forward. And Plays a solid defence into the onside. Picked up by that short catching mid wicket. Taking his time and now he takes a little bit of a wander towards square leg. Smith at the top of his mark, polishes the ball on the back of his thigh and now steams in again. Once more, and this time this one's left alone outside the off stump by Denley. And it's going to bring up the end of the 21st over. Kent of 46 for four, and I can say hello again to Matt. Hello, yes, I was, as, I was uh, uh, as subtle as I could be about Kent's fate here, but I think it's fair to say that um, this could be a crushing victory for Essex and a crushing defeat for Kent if it carries on going this way. If there's going to be any hope for Kent, is literally just seeing out overs, I would suggest, at this point. We've seen the, the pitch hasn't had that much to do. Perhaps this is what Essex envisaged or hoped from a fourth day pitch when they batted first. But Kent will be hoping to get the shine, get the hardness out of this Kookaburra ball and, and perhaps bat out the rest of the afternoon. But looking like a tall order at the moment, as this is... Uh, Harry Finch defending the ball to mid-wicket. That's where Tom Wesley will be a very happy Essex captain at the moment. Four close fielders around the bat. Two in front under the helmets. Leg and orthodox slip. And uh, Finch waits for this one. And guides that into the onside. There'll be a single for him as can go on to 47 for four. The wind is... Uh, blowing a pace here, isn't it? Really, it's disgusting. As, uh, I'm just going to shut one of the windows there as papers go flying around if you don't. Here's Harmer round the wicket then to Denley. Comes down the pitch and uh, up in the air. Would it be caught? No, just short of Snater. Now, Joe Denley, just as he did against Somerset last week, I think just trying to see if he can knock Simon Harmer off his uh, rhythm here and maybe out of the attack, but that might have been slightly easier against the Somerset spinners than against someone like Simon Harmer. It's not a great connection. And Snater coming out in the mid-wicket. Wasn't far away from catching that one. Finch on the back foot. Defends that and there's no run. But I wonder if that is the approach from Joe Denley. who plays a natural game to attack and just try and take it to Essex rather than perhaps wait for a ball from Harmer with his name on it. And uh, Finch does well on the back foot there. Just a little punch into the onside, and uh, it's fielded by Tom Wesley for a dot ball there. One to come from Harmer. I don't think Kent will exactly be counting down the overs at this point. There's only 22 on the board after this one, 64 to be bowled. Uh, driven by Harry Finch, fielded by Simon Harmer. Uh, end of the over. Kent 48 for four. Uh, doesn't really sound any better at the end of these uh, these overs four down six for Essex to wheedle out or blast out and uh, they have the victory yeah it's getting a little bit aggressive the wind it nearly knocked our computer screen over yeah 
a flying flying window so I'd left one open that was my fault entirely a flying coffee flying yep. computer screens yep. it was chaos in there if the computer screen had gone I think I was going to be escorted from the ground probably not before time for a lot of Essex supporters <laughs> frankly there we go well you're still here so <laughs> yeah. not much damage not was damage. done thankfully as here's Snater to continue Denley in his stance ready to face and this one just beats the outer edge of the bat and straight into the gloves of Michael Pepper yeah, forecast is looking much better than it was earlier in the day. For any Kent fans wanting to know if the, the rain is going to come and save their side, I'd say there is time enough for Essex to finish this off, if, certainly if they keep on going the way they have been. Am I right in thinking that the Kookaburra has been brought in for the first two games and then the last two games That's of right, the yeah. what county championships? Rounds one and two and thirteen and fourteen. Yeah. Here's Snater again and Denley forward, solid in defence. Plays it to extra cover. We're not moaning about it now, are we? No, <laughs> in we're not terms moaning the, about it. But the, I'm uh, just you know what I mean, though. It's 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 it doesn't seem to be an issue at this point. The um, Essex have played better than Kent in this match and could finish all the victory here. I'm just trying to figure out what the overall reasoning would have been. I'm sure you're probably more well versed Well, with that as here comes Snater and this time again forward is Denley and closes the face of the bat as it's played to short mid wicket. As I understand it from the from the governing body the ECB is to try and redress the balance certainly in April and September that perhaps seam bowlers have particularly with the Duke's ball where it's easier in these conditions just to um, on certainly on green top pitches make it very very difficult for batters so it's almost um, impossible for opening batters to get going for instance and that it's ball outweighs bat. It's nice a shorter delivery and it's just played off the back foot what we've seen, unfortunately, in a lot of games is the opposite, isn't it? Is the, is the other side of the coin, is getting a lot of games where it's 500 plays 600 and long periods of time where there isn't really much tension in the game. Not great for the spectators, and I'm not sure how much anyone's, anyone on the pitch learns from that either. Apart from batters, love to bat, don't they? So um, I'm sure there are a few with hundreds and double centuries in the first couple of rounds here, only too happy with it. Yeah, lots of centuries happening in the first two rounds. As here's Snater, and this one's a bit of width outside the off stump, and it's played through, cut away, and it's hopefully going to be going all the way to the boundary. I think it stopped just before it has, literally inches away from the boundary rope down towards the entertainment boxes here at the ground. I'll pick up a couple in the process though. Score moves to 48 for four. But surely that's the challenge of playing cricket in England. It's the Duke's walk ball in English conditions. The ball's moving. It's a, it's a hard battle. Yeah. Like I know in Australia they use the kookaburra, but the pitchers out there, they've got bounce in them as here comes Snater and it's a full delivery and Finch is forward and defends. I believe they must have picked up three in the last ball. Bringing Finch on to strike here for the last one. End of the 23rd over score is 51 for four. So in Australia, obviously, they've got bouncy wickets. So the Kookaburra has its effect there. And then in India, they use the SG ball yep. and wickets out there. We know turn. So each country, so to speak, has their challenges. And surely, aren't you making it slightly easier? Like... The Duke's ball in England in April, May, it moves around. That's the pure beauty of the game, really, isn't it, in Red Bull cricket? It's certainly an argument. I think I mean, the ECB would say, in development perhaps of batters, that it's um, that it's unfairly weighted perhaps towards seam bowlers who won't um, profit in other conditions, if that makes sense. So, you know, if you have an England player that goes abroad to play in Australia or, you know, the Duke's ball, if you can bowl it at... 70, 80 miles an hour, you know, even sub-70 and take um, potfuls of wickets as uh, ooh, bowls, it keeps it a bit low to Joe Denley. Um, I know one Darren Stevens wouldn't have been a fan of the Kookaburra ball, that's for sure. Uh, but as I said, um, I think listeners will know, we've heard me before, I'm, I'm anything but an apologist for the, uh, the ECB, but I, but I think uh, that's the idea the outcome as Denny, as Denny comes down here and uh, the pitch and just pushes this one away with his bat, there's no run. The outcome appears to be a, a lot of, well not benign pitches exactly, but 
combinations of pitches and balls which gives you a not exactly the tensest cricket I'm not sure what we're learning from it to be honest that's a great delivery from Harmer but as I say we, we're watching this and Essex managed to win <laughs> last last week by a street against Nottinghamshire and here they have a vice-like grip on Kent's second innings as well so uh, they're certainly finding it to their liking and they may say as Harmer bowls to Denley he goes over the top of this one no one's going to catch that apart from someone in the crowd that's hit the balcony to our right has rattled off the iron railings and that'll be um, beautifully timed six from Joseph Liam Denley he goes on to 12 57 4 4 beautiful uh, looking shot from yeah. him and just really made the most of the fact that most of the fielders are up close within the ring or around the bat and I think maybe that shot may have deformed the ball a little bit or is it going to be okay he will, he will be hoping it's not all the shine and made it soft <laughs> just in that one fell blow but 51 for four, I wouldn't put it against Simon Harmer to spin one of those either. Quicker delivery from Harmer. It's driven along the ground. Or was it slightly uppish? There was a, a yelp as it went past Tom Wesley, so perhaps it was just skimming the ground as it passed the Essex captain, but uh, dot ball, end of the over. And yeah, as I was saying before, Nick, I think that Joe Denley, it's his natural game to try and take the attack to a spinner. And in his mind now, he's probably thinking, look, we're... 57 for four if I just stick at the crease play my un an unnatural game and just try and nerdle around and defend it off my off my toes to a spinner like Simon Harmer I'm more likely to get out than I am coming down the pitch and uh, distributing the ball around perhaps giving the opposition captain something to think about but anyway I'm putting words in his mouth 57 for four it is Kent in trouble Essex on top lovely sunshine stiff breeze Matt Cole, Nicky Cowdery, uh, Nicky Cowdery, Nicky Chowdhury, <laughs> great cricketing family, another one. Here's Snater in the gums and this one beats the outer edge of Harry Finch's bat and taken softly and comfortably by Michael Pepper who stood up to the stumps. Nicky's from the famous Chowdhury cricketing family, not the famous <laughs> Kent Cowdery cricketing family. There we go. You got there in the end. I did, thank you. Got there in the end. Michael Pepper up to the stumps. A slip, leg slip, short leg, short catching mid-wicket, short catching widish mid-wicket. This time forward is Finch and plays a beautiful looking defence and it just runs straight back past Snater and it's picked up by mid-on. There's no run. Andy on the email has cleared up and actually ruined mine and Don's fun about the uh, the, ha the batting helmets. Andy says, read the four helmets, as in the, the uh, fielding helmets behind uh, Michael Pepper here. Once he hits the first one, it's a dead ball and five runs. So you don't get extra extra runs for hitting three or four. That's a shame. But Andy, thank you very much. Here's Nader past the umpire and again, Finch. Forward, defends, beautiful looking defence. Straight to extra cover, fielded by Dean Algar. Oh, I can still barely make out where he is. He's hidden. This is a is this a seven two? No, not quite. Six three field on the leg side, isn't it? Yep. Fascinating stuff again from um, Tom Wesley. Four quite close on the on side. One behind square. Short square leg and two on the drive. Mid wicket. Snater to Finch, who's forward and closes the face of the bat and turns it into the hands of a short-catching mid-wicket. Just getting more tributes to Derek Underwood coming in today, the Kent Barler who's died at the age of 78. And um, Thank you for all of them so far. KentCrocket at gmail.com Here's Snater at the top of his mark, turns and steams in towards us and it's a short ball and it's pulled away by Harry Finch. Straight down to deep backward square leg, they'll pick up a single in the process. Score moves to 58 for four. Nice pull shot there, just swiveled on contact. Brings Joe Denley onto strike. Who's donning his old fashioned cricket sweater old school style cricket sweater There's, here comes Snater and this is just turned into the onside it's a dot ball, brings up the end of oh, the 25th over, 58 for 4 is the score, Denley on 12 Finch on 9 
another email here we've got time for this one from Spitfire Johnny between overs I hope so great to hear from you John thank you uh, Derek Underwood memory says my favourite memory of Derek Underwood comes from the days when they used to play a Sunday league 40 over game in the middle of a championship match bonkers he says to think of that now Kent were playing away at Sussex and Derek had managed to seal the 40 over game for Kent with a career best six wicket haul with help from his own old chum uh, Notty uh, not behind the stumps it earned him a tea time interview with Peter Walker on the telly uh, where Peter somewhat spoiled the move by reminding Derek that the next morning he was due to be facing tall fast menacing South African pace bowler Garth LaRue and co as he resumed his championship innings Derek had been uh, sent in as a night watchman on the Saturday and he sarcastically told the interviewer that he was really rather looking forward to that. Here's uh, Harmer to Finch, defends that away and there's no run. The next day, despite his concerns about the pace and threat of Mr LaRue, he managed to complete a century which I believe may have been his only one in first class cricket. There's Harmer bowls to Finch. Right forward on that one. Dead bats it. No run. He was certainly one of the best cricketers Kent has ever produced with a unique bowling style, says the Spitfire Johnny. He always played the game in the right spirit. A true gentleman. We certainly won't see his like again. Rest in peace. Spitfire Johnny, thank you very much for that. And um, do get your, your thoughts about Derek Underwood and memories. This one's whipped away by Finch. Um, I'm assuming it bounced before it got to Snater because there was no great excitement, but... Finch has worked it away on the onside and there is no run. 58 for four. That's BBC Essex Cricket at gmail.com. Is that right, Dom? Sorry. BBC Essex Cricket at gmail.com. Lovely stuff. Or Kent Cricket at gmail.com. Uh, we'd love to hear from you today. Our Twitter addresses as well. I'll give you in a second. As Harmer Bowls, flattish delivery, quicker one to uh, Finch. Actually, gets some bounce. It wasn't that flat. Just a little bit quicker and Finch does. Propel it into the offside. Matt Critchley, who Don Topley said should have come on many overs ago, he's warming up, though it might just be to keep himself warm at uh, leg slip. Harmer to Finch, gives him a bit of width. Finch goes for that one. It's a misfield by Jamie Porter at mid off, and I think they'll come back for two. They will indeed. So they'll go to 64 4. There won't be any further alarms. Two off the bowling of Harmer, who has one for 21 now. A ball shy of the end of the 10th over here on BBC Essex, BBC Kent, via the, uh, the stream here from uh, Essex County Cricket Club and via BBC Sport uh, online, the BBC Sport website and app. Falling through from Harmer, defended by Finch, end of the over. And the wind's getting up again. Clouds don't look too threatening now. That's great news for uh, for cricket and particularly for Essex. 60 for four. Denley for 12 rather. Uh, Finch has 11. And those uh, Twitter, sorry, X addresses. If you want to send us a zeet. I think that's a new word. I've just decided that's going to uh, be the new word. Nikki Chowdhury has already put uh, a patent in for that one, so you can't use it without paying a retainer. <laughs> uh, it's uh, at Tonna, Toppers, Tonners, at Toppers Senior SNR. Uh, at Nikki Chowdhury and uh, at BBC Kent Sport for messages for us this afternoon. Matt Critchley has finally come on. That's what Don was doing on his phone. He was calling Tom Wesley, messaging him. Critchley now, he's put exclamation mark. And here he comes. The leg spinner from the Hayes close end. Extremely obedient. Critchley's bowls one leg spin from the Graham Gooch end. It's a bit windy as well now as the sun's Hidden behind the clouds, yeah. there's a breeze. It'll be fun bowling in this. Slip, leg slip, short leg, short catching extra cover. And cover was in the ring, but now it's been sent out. He's been sent out down to the boundary. Yep. As here comes Critchley. Slightly shorter delivery. It's cut away off the back foot by Denley. And down to the newly placed deep cover. Pick up a single. Leg spinner as well. Does the just gusty wind like this affect you on your you on the way in, on the walk in to the to deliver? Does it does it put you off your delivery stride at all? It affects me. Right. <laughs> Everyone's well. different, but it does affect me. The worst is if it's gusty and you're then yeah. on a slope and you're bowling uphill. As here comes Critchley, it's a shorter delivery again. Looks to cut it, misses the bat, and yeah. I think Harry Finch might want to. Uh, Think again about that shot. Playing a miss, isn't it? Outside or stump. Critchley again through and 
slightly fuller of Finch's forward defence point. Yeah, I like Don's bowling change already here. I think Critchley's asking a different question. Finch is just taking a while to settle. Critchley in again and slightly flatter delivery. Finch off the front foot goes to leave the ball. Yeah, it was a quicker one, wasn't it, as well? Almost medium pace, it felt, from Critchley. And he is again, and this time again, Fuller. Finch is forward, defends. You always feel like you're all in the game if you're a leg spinner. As Critchley walks back to the top of his mark, which probably isn't more than five, six steps away. And he's in again, and... Finch forward, opens the face of the bat, plays it to point, and it's fielded by Aaron Beard, and it brings up the end of the 27th over, Kent 61 for four. If you're joining us, the four to go, Miege was uh, caught by Pepper Bowl Porter for none in the third over, Compton LBW to Porter in the ninth for six, Daniel Bell Drummond, LBW Simon Harmer 18, 37 for three that was, with no addition to the total at that point. Jack Leaning bowled by Shane Snater at 4 8, 37 for four that was. So these two have put on another 24, uh, 13 for Denley from 20 balls, 11 for Finch from 32. Crease occupation, that's what it's all about for Kent here. They've got a lot of overs to see off. Um, another. 37 possible in the day for uh, Essex, even more if they bowl them quickly. As Denley <coughs> just rolls the wrists over this one and it's out towards uh, square leg for a single. And one to the total. No oh, much moving here. Might be people coming in perhaps after work as well at some point, but uh, 25 past three, maybe not now. I was going to say it's a bit early to get off work, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it is indeed. I'm sure your boss would be having words with you. <laughs> he probably would. Maybe school children after their uh, day school. I mean, school days seem to get earlier and earlier to me. I don't know. The see, children seem to be out at half past three these days. I don't know. See, when I used I'm to go old. to school, I'd Defended have to be on. at school by 7.45 yeah. and I wouldn't have the last bell until 6pm. Oh, crikey. That's proper schooling. As, <laughs> as a finch. Well, that, <laughs> that seems a bit punishing to me. That's a long day. Oh, if it gets better. I used to go to school on a Saturday as well, being in school for 7.45 and finishing at 1 o'clock. Crikey. It's no wonder you're so well, edu well educated, though, <laughs> Nicky, to be honest. Here's uh, Harmer outside the off stump and uh, driven <laughs> by Finch, but straight, straight at the bowler, Luke Benkenstein. Uh, the fielder, Luke Benkenstein, the uh, sub-fielder, no run. I think many of my teachers would probably challenge you on that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, 1 o'clock would be the last bell on a Saturday, unless there right. was a fixture. Ah, uh, OK. Here's uh, Harmer outside the off stump, padded up by Finch. Always a dangerous game, but he was a long way from his stumps there. He's almost sort of walked to the boundary and shouldered on to make sure he got everything out of the way of it. And Harmer over the wicket now. Finch still surrounded by those fields, drives it. Attractive drive as well, and Jamie Porter sets off after it. I think he'll catch it. It's going to be close, actually. But uh, he does get there, ball just slowing up perhaps on a little bit of a wet outfield after some really torrential showers this morning. A comeback for three. Finch is 14. Denley is 14. Four wickets down though for 65, Kent. So yeah, I spent a lot of my childhood at school. More than yeah. more than one should, I still think. <laughs> I mean, I think I, a lot of us feel that way at, all told, no matter what hours you spend in school. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, Saturday school wasn't the one. And then, <coughs> find out that the year we left school, after that, they decided they would get rid of Saturday school. I was well, fuming. That's, that's I was cruel. Language, I was absolutely yeah. fuming. Here comes Critchley at the top of his mark. Finch on strike, and that's a big appeal, and the finger goes up, he gets him! Comes into the tack, and he gets... His first wicket in his second over. And Harry Finch will have to depart. Of scoring 14. Kent, five down now. 65 on the board. Yeah, and Armour strikes again. And he is gone. 
sorry, crucially, he stopped frights for the first time. Where am I? Just on Harmer. Gone for 14, and uh, Harry Finch again had a long look at the umpire, but I think this is a very dispirited Kent camp at this point. They're just trying everything they can to see off Essex, but this looks, um, I would say now, unless uh, the two Denleys who come together to play for the first time, what a story that would be if they could see off this very fine Essex attack for a, a Kent draw, but this is last chance saloon for me for Kent as soon as they're into the tail, which is long and starts with, eight, with Agar at eight. Um, I think Essex are very much on course for a win. Even now though, you'd say at uh, 65 for five, that looks very much the case. It does, and I must say, I'm seeing that you're noting this down on your notepad, which talking about yeah. school reminds me of my notepad when I was at, in my maths classes. <laughs> <laughs> not giving me good memories I'm sorry about that yeah. <laughs> the, the amount of circles and brackets and that sort of thing yes just to remind myself when the uh, it's all the grids and yeah <laughs> oh we see it's oh it's the it's the gridded it's paper the, it's yes the gridded yeah paper. I realize these are French notebooks actually you French may have notebooks. may have got them on exchange trips or uh, never went day on trips to no, never France went, there we go never yeah went on an perfect for cricket because they you know you've got the margin down anyway <laughs> enough of that <laughs> <laughs> another time another uh, time so Jaden Denley with his uncle Joe would it be the story to end all stories for, uh, for Kent here with the uncle and nephew batting out a draw it's quite a cute one for the memory book isn't it I mean that would be incredible but uh, I think it's going to be very very hard it will be as we've got a slip a leg slip short leg and a in place for Jaden as he faces his first ball and is forward in defence. A large stride towards the ball. Practically lunging. Yeah. So we're ducking the, uh, the first innings. And again, forward, defence. Another lunge towards the ball. I think our view of the scoreboard, if anyone can hear us that can press the remote button here says it's going to go into standby mode very shortly. It's critchly round the wicket and Jaden plays this into the onside it's not going to be a run as it's fielded by square leg Sorry, our uh, IT expert Don Topley's on it Critchley in again round the wicket and Jaden plays this one straight to mid on He's done it He's done it. Well, now the screen's just gone. Oh, oh. oh. oops. <laughs> It'll be fine, he says. <laughs> there we go. He's turned it off and on again. Here's Critchley again, and Jaden's forward. Defence, and it brings up the end of the over as well. 29 overs gone, 65 for five. Our oh, Kent, and as Matt has mentioned time and time again, they have a long tail. Yeah, I think beyond this, Agar to come. Uh, Gilchrist, Parkinson, Gilchrist showed hitherto unseen powers of batting in the first innings and got himself to 41 but um, Kent may look for help from the weather gods it's not happening right now on the pitch for them Crikey, so that gentleman's cap has just flown I think into the river behind us <laughs> just <laughs> suddenly looked up something has flown at great speed I hope he catches it before he gets there and uh so yes, yeah, Simon Harmer. Joe Denley looks around, he's on 14. Jaden Denley yet to score. And the uh, slight pause here is because umpire Lloyd is, has he got the heavy bales out of his pocket? I'm, I'd imagine he's probably already put them on top of the stumps, but as uh, Harmer bowls, Denley goes forward. It's a dangerous game trying to just flick that into the onside, but on top he's giving it the heavy ooh I think maybe Denley's got outside the off stump there far enough for the impact but of course Harmer will argue off spinner it's coming into him maybe doing enough umpire has given Joe Denley the benefit of that and he's just asking the umpire as well yeah, Simon Harmer's asked him again I'm not sure how politely that was a little bit grumpily maybe the umpires Denley comes down the pitch lofts that over uh, long on, and that will be four runs. Um, um, some applause. I don't think 
Clon will mind that too much. He'll get plenty of deliveries at uh, Joe Denley. Just looking uh, exasperated maybe at the previous delivery not being given, but Denley goes on to 18 from 23. Joe Denley. Should we call them Joe and Jane? Uh, Joe and Joe and Jane? No. Jaden. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Having Jayden. a bit yeah. of trouble today, aren't we? I am. <laughs> I'm wearing these teeth in for the dog, as they say. Here comes uh, Harmer to Uncle Joe and a single taken by him. He's on to 19. So the field changes over. I've got to be more precise with my diction here, I think. Nikki, that's the Thing. Speak slower. Again, want to bat slowly here. It's all right. I forgive you for my one because my surname is hard to pronounce anyway. I get it wrong. <laughs> We've always got Cowdery's on the brain at Kent as well, of course. Ooh, that's a swing and a miss from Jane Denley. He's gone off outside off stump and teed off at a wide one from Harmer, which has gone straight on more or less. Simon Harmer exchanges a a joke, I think, with Tom Wesley. Jaden Denley, he had to get off the mark in his first class career, leaves that one. Again, there's a lot of turn from Harmer, but this time it's fairly harmless. It goes well past the off stump, but with Harmer as any great spinner, as a batter, you've got to wonder what he's teeing you up for here with his control of the ball. This one on the off stump, skews away, uh, kept low by Jaden Denley, and that is his first run in first class cricket and gets a little, little round of applause for that. Sigh of relief from him as, as yeah, well it must sure. be. Rings up the end of the over. On. It does indeed. It does. I, we're close to T here aren't we? We are. 340 on the final day no matter how many overs have been bowled. Um, actually we're close to par anyway aren't we on the over eight I think with uh, at least 31 overs will be bowled and uh, a minimum of 33 available. It may well get part through two before T with the spinners on. So we might get a couple in as we've got Critchley to Jaden Denley. It's around the wicket. It's a slightly shorter delivery. Goes back to play it and it's a bit full to go back there. But he's just managed to get himself out of jail with that one. As he taps his bat a few times and now again off the back foot just opens the face of the bat and plays it to square leg just b behind square it's not a run it's another dot in the book Critchley in again past the umpire shorter as Jaden's down the wicket uses his feet turns it into the onside Straight to square leg. Critchley in again. This is a fuller delivery. A little bit more flight from Critchley. And Jaden's forward lunges in his defence. And taps his bat ready to go again. It's forward, lunges again. Really leans into it, kills the ball, smothers the spin. As Critchley gets back to the top of his mark, he's currently spinning his hand, spinning the ball in his hand a few times at the top of his mark, adjusting the field. Just moving 45 in to, I believe, leg slip. Beard's going under the helmet there, isn't he? Yeah. Leg slip now. Yeah, so Beard's coming to leg slip. And yeah, they've got a ball to come here, haven't they? So they're just trying to put the pressure on Jaden Denley. That square leg's pushed behind. Where's Simon Harmer going now? Looks a bit confused. Yeah, he does. He's <laughs> round in circles. And here's Critchley for the final ball. And Denley's forward, defends. And it brings up the end of the over as well. 31 overs gone. Yeah, I'll definitely get another one in before T. There's a maiden over there from Critchley. Score is 71 for five and we might be able to squeeze another one in before T. Yeah, then, absolutely. And then, talking about T, we get to try this much-awaited T that Don's... Oh, the Roybosch T, is that right? Yes. He's got it on the... Oh. Oh. Oh, Don. Oh, you have got it. He's got it. 
He told may me not have time. I'm him. not sure. We put him under a lot of pressure. Um, let me let me read some more emails, if I may do, in the time we have available from our listeners about um, Derek Underwood, who we heard of his passing today. Um, Matt on kencrocket at gmail dot com. Crikey, I'm having trouble today. Has <laughs> uh, just pushed into the onside. Uh, this is Matt Winter. Great to hear from you, Matt. Single taken by Joe Denley. Um, he says Gloucestershire family, but my grandfather banged on about Underwood when I had. Uh, to take up non-turning filth, he says, following knee, fu- knee fun, he said, that surgery. And he banged on about anyone outside the shire. If he banged on about anyone outside the shire, he was good. And that's fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, Harmer to bowl to Jaden Denley. Kent Batters after that announcement, by the way, are sporting black armbands as well as they take a, a single. Bring Joe Denley on strike again. Four balls Till T. Um, Anthony in Eastbourne, thank you for your email as well. A great shame to hear of the passing of the late Derek Underwood. Remember him taking 8 for 31 against Scotland in the Nat West Bank Trophy in 1987. Yeah, a lot of great figures. Here's uh, Harmer to Joe Denley to mid wicket, and there's no run. Um, Chris, thank you so much for your, uh, your email and your compliments from Sunny Brighton. Um, Very kind indeed. Harmer bowls to uh, Joe Denley. Oh, he is definitely stopped by the wind there. Huge gust. There's dust blowing across from right to left as we look at it. And Simon Harmer actually is just going to the teeth of the gale now. But he will will bowl this ball to uh, Joe Denley. You can hear the oohs and ahs. Denley, ha- it has gone back first. I think it's bat and pad, and it has stopped. It looks here about three inches from his off stump. And Jordan Cox has thrown himself backwards. He's now lying on his back. You can't quite believe that hasn't hit the stumps. It has not. Joe Denley survives. Two balls until T, unless this is a wicket kick, wicket taking delivery, of course. Harmer. Denley comes down the pitch. Oh, that's a lovely shot. That's checked back over the bowler's, bowler's head. With some force, it just misses the cameraman on the back the balcony, bounces back off, and that is six runs. Lovely shot. 26 for Joe Denley from 28 deliveries. 79 for five. Kent, though, going in uh, nearly at T. Ball to come. Umpire Lloyd inspects the ball handed to him by Simon Harmer. It's fine. It passes through the hoop. Still round enough. <laughs> Flat delivery by Harmer into the onside, fielded by Wesley. And they go to T. What a session that is for Essex. They've taken five Kent wickets and have them, well, all but beaten, it looks like, at T on the final day. miyeye has gone. Compton, too. They both went to Jamie Porter early in the piece. Daniel Bell Drummond for 18 to Simon Harmer. Shane Snater, a bold leaning for eight. Finch. LBW to Critchley for 14, just a couple of overs ago. It's the Denleys, <coughs> uncle and nephew, Joe and Jaden, to come out after the tee on 26 and 2. They are faced with the task of trying to see off this Essex attack and keep those five wickets intact before uh, for another 32 overs at least in the evening session. Uh, that is the, uh, the task for Kent. For Essex, it's simple. Five more wickets. They will make it back-to-back victories to start their county championship summer. Here at Chelmsford, in the sunshine, 20 minutes for tea. We'll resume commentary. Me, Matt Cole, Nicky Chowdhury and Don Topley. Great to have your company so far. We'll speak to you again shortly.
Right. <laughs> Sam Cook having a bowl at is that Sam Cook? Yeah. Oh my god, 158 for one, off 12. Oh, in the IPL? Yeah. Heinrich Klassen's just come in. He's not a bad player, is he? Not an easy job bowling to them, it's a no. classless game as well, isn't it? It it's is. Well, Travis Head has got 100 Oof. in 40 balls. Mrs. T says it's carnage. All right, got your tea there. You would have drunk Roy Boss in SA, wouldn't you? Oh, indeed. Yeah. 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 Welcome to sunny Chelmsford and uh, for the last session of this four day encounter here at Chelmsford between Essex the hosts and Kent well in the fourth innings Kent trying to battle out and, and get a draw gain an honourable draw here at Chelmsford well that will be some success it really will but Essex the host county, county are looking for their second successive championship win two out of two which would be uh, well they'll be the early leaders and it would be a great start to their campaign at T Kent I'm not going to tell you what they're chasing because it is quite a lot 
not important in the grand scheme of things but they are 79 for five so five kent wickets are needed for essex to claim their second win and at the crease to rescue or help kent to get to a draw are in fact two denleys uncle joe and nephew jaden so there's a J.L. Denley, J.L., that's a very famous cricketer, wasn't it? Justin Langer was called J.L. And at the other end is J.K. Denley, Jaden Denley, who J.K. was a very famous left-arm swing bowler here at Chelmsford. In the moment, we have a four o'clock update for BBC Essex. Stand by. Yeah, welcome back and good afternoon. It's a good afternoon for Essex as they have reduced Kent to 79 for 5 at T. And they've just come out for T and just started a game. But Jamie Porter collected two wickets with the new ball early doors, reduced them to 19 for 2. And then it was the turn of uh, Shane Snater. He clean bowled leaning for 8. Harmer and Critchley then entered the fray, got themselves two wickets and they finished at T at 79 for five. Essex need five more wickets for their second successive win, which would be magic. 79 for five is the Kent score. In that update, the Kent score has moved to 83 as Critchley bowls a ball played out into the offside behind square where they take two quick runs and Essex can't prevent the second run. Good cricket and good calling from the two Denleys. Jaden Denley uh, adding to his T score. He moves to, I think it is, eight. His uncle... Joe, 26 not out at the other end, and uh, this time it's short, it's pulled. Pulled, but to the man on the one at uh, almost 45, saving one on the leg side. He's up, he's not back, so they cannot get the single. Critchley, who got five wickets in the first innings. He bowls round the wicket to the left-handed uh, Jaden Denley, who drives, but he gets an inside edge that runs to that man, saving one at 45. 85 for five. Little stat about Critchley at the end of the over. This time it's a little too straight, played into the leg side where there is no run. And S... Uh, Kent stay on 85 for 5. This stat that I would like to read out. OK. Critchley claimed a five-wicket haul in Kent's first innings, but also notched up 100 brilliantly in the first innings on uh, Friday. It's the 29th occasion for Essex that a player has claimed that feat, and there have been 15 different players who have claimed a hundred and a fifer in the very same first class match of which six times that's happened at Chelmsford the last four people to do it well back in about 83 Derek Pringle did it against Hampshire at South End Jesse Ryder I think was one of the more recent people he did it against Worcestershire when he had a short spell with the club Ronnie Arani former captain did it against Surrey as uh, Harmer comes in, this is driven down all the way to Aaron Beard at uh, quite a deep mid on, giving the one but preventing the big hit. And the last one, which probably nobody would, would uh, well, everyone would have guessed, nobody would have uh, denied this fella the chance of a f 100 and a fifer as Harmer bowls. It's played into the leg side, no run. Is Graham Napier. He did it. And I think it was his final game which was the far last game i think played at colchester uh, for essex against sussex in 2016 where he claimed a hundred and a fifer this is a thick outside edge played by the young denley played through sort of a gully region there is a a wide gully and a first slip for the uh, right arm off spinner but it's gone between the gap and it's been fielded and they collect two more runs I think that's now is it 
I'm looking at the scoreboard. Has it been put up or is it about to? I could be 88 for five. This time there's an edge and it's missed. I think uh, could be Dean Elgar where they're going to take two runs again. We look at the umpire. Yeah, it's Jordan Cox there, I think. With Jordan the, Cox with a snood. The biggest snood. It yeah. is, yes. He's channeling well, the invisible man there, isn't he? With the he is. The I'm not going to say it was a missed catch. Fair Simply enough. he missed the field and it went very fine, near enough to through the keeper along the floor. This time clipped into the leg side. They look for one. It's going to be one. Will it be another two? As Aaron Beard is chasing the ball. They run quickly and get in. Good bit of fielding. It just avoids Jamie Porter. One bowler dives on the floor and misses it and his uh, well, I'd like to say his colleague, the other fast bowler, Aaron Beard, has to go and get it. As Kent get to 90 for five. Harm around the wicket. This time as a player miss by Jaden Denley to complete the end of an over. And Kent have mustered now 90 for five. Welcome back to listeners on Five Live Sports Extra. You join us in the final session on the final day. Essex against Kent. We've got a historic batting partnership out there at the moment. Two Denleys, Uncle Joe and nephew Jaden. The first time Kent have had an uncle and nephew playing for them since 1854. But no time for sentimentality is there, Dawn Topley, because Kent are 92 for five. They're staring down the barrel of a defeat here and Essex are chasing their back-to-back -back wins to start the season with a superb bowling performance. Absolutely well put, Matt Cole, BBC Kent, BBC Essex, bringing you ball-by-ball -ball commentary. Critchley is going to continue. It's spin from both ends here. It's a very, very blustery day. We've had a couple of really uh, apocalyptic showers to start the day here, which kept us off for the first session. But it looks like these dark clouds are blowing away. Great news for Essex as they try and get it... Uh, at Kent. I feel like we're a ship at sea at the moment uh, as uh, Joe Denley backs away from that ball from Critchley because a huge gust of wind. Everything is shaking. I think we're going to be all right though, uh, Dawn, are we? Is, is yep. this... It's interesting you talk about the wind. Yep. Yes, it can put the bowlers off, but also it can put the batsmen off. Yeah, absolutely. And at crucial moments, obviously, drive by Joe Denley, a little bit toe end out towards Aaron Beard at backward point. Close fielders you would expect in this position. Final day, 92 for five, with Essex chasing uh, the victory as a slip, short leg, leg slip, man on the drive at cover. That one is, uh, then he's gone on the back foot and guided that one out to Snater on the offside boundary for a single. So mm. uh, Joe, De Joe Denley, Jaden Denley making his first class debut. Uh, for uh, Kent, as I said, a lot of sentimentality. It's a great story, but I don't think they'll be thinking about that right now. Jaden Denley will be wondering how he sees off Matt Critchley. The leg spinner keeps really low, yes. but he does flick it off his pads, and that goes for four runs. He's done well there, actually, Jaden mm. Denley, mm. just to get bat mm. on it. Got wrists over it as well. Uh, variable bounce coming to play in the final day. We did wonder, Don, when Essex won the toss. Um, all that time ago, on Friday morning, decided to bat first that they saw something in this pitch or very much hoped that this would be their situation on the final day, giving real help to the spinners, as good as they are already. Critchley with a leg spin to Jaden Denley. He just got four for that whip <coughs> away on the onside. Defended back up the pitch. And a ball to go for them to uh, try and see off. Minimum remaining 29 overs after this one. Critchley to Jaden Denley. He defends it. End of the over, 97 for five. Haven't let Don get a word in edgeways, which is a bit of a rarity, I know, here at Essex. But uh, I'll let you wax lyrical now, Don. Hey, that played very nicely, that over, with one ball, as you said, kept a little low. Listen, I think Kent are very happy with these two Dendys playing at the ends they find themselves. Harmer bowling to the right-handed senior Joe Denley with the ball coming back into the right-hander. And Jaden Denley is down at our end where he's facing Critchley with the ball coming back in to the left-hander. Essex would want it the other way around. This time Denley comes forward. Denley senior gets an inside edge safely into the leg side. There is no run. Four men round the bat, one and two in front of the eye line for Joe Denley. Uh, 
and a conventional slip and a leg slip this time a little quicker plays him on the back foot takes the single sensibly as it goes out to a vacant square leg and there is the one run now Essex will be happy because at the moment Harmer will bowl to the left-handed Denley and Critchley could be bowling to the right-handed Denley. That's the end that Essex would like them to stay. Three men for three men around the bat on the offside, one on the leg side. Harmer gives it a lot of air and this is a little bit of a hack against the spin but he gets away with it. If it had connected with it to uh, Matt Cole, BBC Kent, it would have ended up in the stands. Playing against the spin, Harmer will be happy to see that. Harmer again gives it a bit of air. Just turns, squares himself up a little bit there, does Jaden Denley. Well bowled, but well played. This is a real test for G young Jaden Denley on his county championship debut. Harmer again, little quicker, turns, and we don't know if there was a nick, but it was parried by the keeper. Where it does turn, he's parried it, he's parried it back down the wicket, and the man at forward, short leg, really on the offside, dives onto the wicket to try and parry it, but alas, he fails. Harmer, I think, felt that that was a chance. Denley again to face, the youngster drives into the offside with the spin, good shot, good cricket. What an entertaining over from not just the great bowling of Simon Harmer, but the pressure that Jaden Denley is under. Indeed so. Also during this broadcast, you won't be surprised to hear cricket fans that are reflecting on the passing of the great Derek Underwood and asking for... Kent and Essex fans and all across the country and wherever you are if you've got uh, memories of the great man a very early memory says uh, Richard great to hear from you Richard on kentcricket at gmail.com as Critchley bowls hold that thought and uh, gets forward Denley has an anxious look at the umpire gets forward it was an awkward looking shot definite rap on the pad umpire Blackwell says no dice. He fell over a little bit, didn't it? The, the old-fashioned ten-ton head fell over, and there was a, he hardly moved his feet, and there was a big appeal there. Here's Critchley once more to Joe Denley, and right behind that one, uh, Richard says, very early memory, while well, I was in the sixth form at Chislehurst and Sig Cup Grammar School for Boys, Bill Freeman, the brilliant coach of the school first cricket team, I'll hold that thought. Here's uh, oh, it's a great delivery from Critchley, it's beaten Denley, goes away from the uh, the right-hander and he's left uh, playing at thin air through the wicketkeeper and there's no run. Um, Richard continues, uh, brilliant coach of the school first cricket team, he responded when I asked him how his team had got on in an away fixture, he looked rueful and said, here's uh, Critchley to Denley, defends that, well they had this bowler, some Underwood boy, <laughs> you can guess what the result had been and the rest they say is Kent history Richard thank you so much for that memory of Derek Underwood uh, the great man as uh, Critchley bowls to Denley that one doesn't turn as much it's slightly quicker from Critchley and Denley just defends it off the off stump and there's uh, no run over to come minimum over is remaining we should say 27 and change the one ball they're bringing in the man from the leg side boundary to save the one here they don't yes they don't want Joe Denley I think taking the single as you were saying for the match up as Don Topley was explaining to us Critchley do Joe Denley he defends that one mm. I wouldn't say that comfortably either just mm. popped up a little bit from the bat but safe enough end of the over a maiden from Critchley he has one for 12 from six overs and three maidens Kent have lost Miyeye for none, Compton for six, Beldrummond for 18, Leaning for eight, Finch for 14, Porter has two, Harmer has one, Critchley has one, and Snater has one. 98 for five, quite a productive partnership. They came back from T on 79 for five. Joe Denley, 26 at T. 
Jaden Denley 2, they've moved on to 29 and 18 respectively. So it's been a bit of a rear guard action, 98 for 5, still Harmer to bowl from our end, the river end, or Sir Alistair Cook end, which is turned and it's gone to the floor because he's played with soft hands as Jaden Denley, which is very good. A real baptism or education this playing on a fourth innings wicket against international class off spinner in Simon Harmer. Four men round the bat. Jaden Denley bat aloft. He comes forward, he drives in to out, he takes a quick single as it goes to a very wide mid off. Aaron Beard can't stop the single. We all change because the left hander, Denley, has become a right handed uncle Joe Denley. Armour over the wicket now, four men round the bat, he bowls. This time he comes down the wicket, bat and pad tight together, plays it nicely back to the bowler, well played Joe Denley. It's even a test for the senior pro, Joe Denley. Batting with his nephew. Armour in a little quicker, forced off the back foot, no run. Goes out to Aaron Beard at mid-off, no run. No break in play here, just Harmer talking to the umpire. He may have given him something as Harmer turns. Right arm over the wicket to Joe Denley. Joe Denley comes down the wicket and just caresses it with the spin. Straight out to the man at short mid-wicket. No run, good looking shot, well bowled. Good, intense cricket this. Championship cricket, fourth day finish, last session. Kent can't win, but can they save the game? Can Essex get five wickets? Harmer, little fuller, driven down the ground, where Joe Denley will take a single as it takes a ball to deepish mid on for the end of the over. Critchley removes his sweater, 99 for five. Indeed, so here with Don Topley, with me, Matt Cole, and Nicky Chowdhury. Watching this absorbing contest now. 45 deliveries for Joe Denley's 30, 35 for Jaden's 19. Uh, five wickets down though, Kent, the important statistic here for both sides. And this will be Matt Critchley to continue, no surprise there. They may squeeze in if they need to. More overs than the allotted to six o'clock as Joe Denley pushes forward on that one along the ground, but very close to Dean Elgar, who's uh, no, it's that Ferris Cushy actually. I get used to Dean Elgar being there. I'm not sure that is him anymore. I think it's Ferris. He's now crouching at short leg. This one's cut away indeed. Dean Elgar's at second slip uh, by Denley. Joe Denley. So used to saying Denley over and over again over the years. Joe Denley brings. Nephew Jaden to the strike against Matt Critchley. He'll spin the ball into the left hander, the natural delivery, unless he tries the, the googly. Tiny adjustment to the field. Shane Snader comes slightly squarer at mid wicket. There Shot. goes Denley over the top, Jaden Denley, and it has beaten the man at backward square, and he swept it and safe it wasn't very far away from a diving flying fielder there and uh, goes to the boundary for four but he's got away with it and Kent fans may have had hearts in mouths there and understandably too but that is four runs over the head of Aaron Beard who did everything he possibly could to throw a hand at it and try and grab their sixth wicket 105 for five Jaden Denley facing once again of course and waits for this one and it just pats it low for those Kushi fields on the uh, the leg side under the helmet. Two balls to come, getting through their overs quickly, but also a lot of tension and peril on these Kent batters. Very forward defensive from Jaden Denley. I like to think that's out of the Jack Hobbs coaching manual. Early 19th, uh, 20th century, way forward, almost grazing the turf with the back knee around the wicket and wide comes quickly quicker one and that no. one has bubbled up no. off bat and pad I think that'll go for four 
It's a miss hit by Jaden Denley. And yeah, didn't end up in a fielder's hands, but could so easily have done. A little bit of a false shot. He's taken chances here. He's on the 23. Is Jaden Denley, his uncle Joe, is on 31. Uh, this partnership, if you're interested in such statistics, is at 42 at the moment. But as I keep saying, the important statistic is the five wickets at the end of the score, 107 for five. Don't know if this is bad news, but uh, Mr. Toakley contacts us. It's raining heavily in Braintree. Come on, Essex, get on with it. Uh, well, where is I'm where? sure they're trying. Braintree You'll have to. is going to be Harmer. Harmer with four men round the bat to Joe Denley, and there's going to be a few runs here, probably two, as J Cox is running after it. He turns and throws, well fielded, but an easy two there. It's played down the leg side, and it is in fact runs. Braintree's famous for having a shopping complex. Is it west of us? That's uh, not. I mean, the shopping's fascinating. I, I would say northwest. Northwest. So it may be a shower that skirted us to the north in that case. Yeah. Because yeah, the yeah. weather is definitely coming from the west. Yep. Um, Baintree is on the way to Stansted Airport, really, from Chelmsford. As this is played, it uh, comes down the wicket, smothers it carefully, diligently, watchfully, and plays it back to Harmer on his follow through. No run. Well played, Joe Denley. Played both balls very well so far. Round the wicket to the right-handed senior batsman. This one turns and goes down the leg side. And he's genuinely not interested in playing that delivery. Um, They'll leave as much as they can leave, I'm sure. We've had a, a lovely message from a young man. This time, Harmer bowls. It's played on the back foot by Denley into the offside. No run. Right. Oh, I think I, yeah, I read that one with Chris earlier on. Yeah, gave us a lot of compliments and uh, um, singled out Ms. Chowdhury for praise. Yes, he did. And we get another one. There's a nick. And this is bounced. It's gone off the inside edge and it evades Feroz Cushy at bat pad on the leg side. They take a single. Harmer looks dejected. And that uh, is, no, still one ball left. Still one ball left. Not quite the end of the over. 109 for five. But feel no, free to get into it. I don't think I had a chance to read it. Before, Archie. Before. Archie's, oh, Archie. Archie Domingo. It's a lovely email from a young man. Oh, maybe. No, maybe it's an email. I driven promise. with the spin into the offside. Not a lot of foot movement. Good hands, though. He accommodated there to Jaden Denley with good hands. Right, this email. Right. Nothing screams the start of the exam, exam season. Ooh more than having the county championship on three different screens while revising for my upcoming exams in May and June. Great work. As a bit of a badger, let me tell you, Archie, there's nothing wrong with being a badger. There is a tradition I've upheld for about three or four years now and always give me the sense of joy in the knowledge that I've got a summer full of cricket to look forward to after I've smashed out my A-levels. Here's Critchley. Good luck with those. To Joe Denley leans forward, but a back pad of the onside Kushi clears up but it's not a catch there's no one nothing wrong with being a badger you sound like a person after our own hearts a badger yes, yes. he could hearts, be a radio actually. commentator in due course I want to thank you for providing such helpful service Critchley bowls to Denley Joe Denley on the back foot uh, Beard fields smartly at the backward point no run and he says I want to say hello and go well Good luck to all the other 15, 18 year olds doing the same thing as the public exams as he is. Thank you, Archie. Archie Domingo, good luck with your exams. Wish you really well, all of you. Here's a Critchley to uh, Denley into the onside. Single taken. To me, those back in the day, O levels and A levels, were the hardest thing. By the time you got to university, if you go there, if you go Archie, I don't think that was quite as stressful. O levels and A levels, or GCSEs and A levels, really stressful. So my heart goes out to you. Keep strong, you'll be fine. On the back foot, Denley. This is uh, Jaden Denley. I'm almost uh, saying to the Kent Patting uh, pair here. Uh, <laughs> almost. Keep strong, you'll be fine. I, I, as an old Offside. schoolmaster, I'd Double. probably say go well, good luck. Absolutely. And all you need is enough currency to get on to the next course. 
Chris, oh, inside edge passes stumps from Jaden Denley. They go for a quick run. Far end, Jaden Denley is safe from the throw from Beard. I felt he might have gone. Sorry, from uh, Elgar, is that it is? I thought he might have gone near end. I was right the first time. Aaron Beard. Anyway, they take a single, 112 for five. But yes, if you think it's hard out there doing those exams, you're right, it is. So don't worry, you're in the same boat as lots of people have been through the same thing. You'll be fine, you'll be great. Here comes uh, Critchley to Denley. That's my pet talk. You're much better at it, Don. Me? Yeah. Gosh. Here's um, a, here's two, a two lovely. the onside, by the way. End of the over, 112 for five. Kent, 23 minimum overs remaining in the day. Essex need five wickets to win. Two Derek Underwood uh, oh, contributions here. Hi there. Great company. Sad to hear the demise of Derek Underwood in his passing. He was such a lovely man. In 1986, he became the first visiting bowler in 51 years at Blackpool Stanley Park. Mm -hmm. Essex played there last year. To take 10 wickets in a match. An amazing 6 for 9 in Lancashire's Calamitous 62 all out. As Harmer bowls outside off stump left alone by the left-handed Denley. 62 all out and 4 for 59 in the second innings of 159. The result that Kent's rather modest total of 251 for 8 declared gave them the victory by an innings and 30 runs. This is in the air where Jaden Denley breaks away to play the shot. It goes into the air, balloons, but it just misses uh, Tom Wesley at cover. Harmer can't believe his luck. Essex have to keep fighting here. And Joe Denley has gone to see Jaden Denley and uh, just probably told him to buckle down again. <laughs> Do you reckon? It won't be at all surprised. Just keep calm. Harmer in again. Bowls a decent ball. This is played with the spin. Opens the face carefully, safely into the backward point region. And he goes on to say, Mr. Waltham, sir, Waltham Home, my final contact with uh, him was at Liverpool in 87 when he explained his visit to Aigberth. Harmer bowls, this is well bowl, played back to the bowler, no run. And um, he'd never played, he never made it to the ground previously. Sadly, rain ruined the game and Derek failed to take a wicket in Lancashire's only game, but he was a delightful man to chat to. Rest in peace, Derek Underwood as this is forced off the back foot to backward point. Slightly wider, but no run. Thank you, Jerry. Walston home for your contribution. Indeed so. Many emails coming in on BBC Essex Cricket at gmail.com and kencricket at gmail.com. Love to hear them. Armour in a little bit quicker. This time, I have to say, Jaden Denley comes forward and plays it rather safely and responsibly. Back to the bowler. Looked good when he comes forward there, but any chance of going back and using his arms to play into the width with the spin? He is, in fact, trying to do that to achieve a few runs. 112 for five, and I think it will be Critchley again. I'm going to suggest another option here. Bring a seamer on for an over, maybe two, but try and change the ends of the spinner. Get Critchley to have a go this end, Harmer up the other. Try something different. Essex need to something to happen. Let's see if the spinners can turn and change ends yeah. and make something happen. 47 partnership between these two now and clipped off the hit by uh, Joe Denley. They'll come back for two. A smartly run by the two Denleys. Um, on the radar, not to give anyone the collie wobbles, but the wind's getting up a little bit. This is the 4.30 cloud coming across this here. I think if we miss this one, we'll be fine for the day. Uh, well, if that's anything like a train, it might be delayed. Let's, uh, let's hope so. Uh, it'll be a single... You mean the showers will be delayed or the... Well, trains are often delayed. I, I'm aware of that. The 4.30? Yeah. I was thinking the 4.30 might be... Oh, a, I see. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Sorry. I, I'll I do apologise. Everyone else at home, I'm sure, had that worked out. Um, on the back foot, Joe Denley sees that one off, and there is no run. 114 for five. 49 between these two. Looked like it was uh, perhaps game over for Kent at 65 for five just before T. Oh, Joe Denley rocks on the back foot there. It shoots a little bit from Matt Critchley, the leg spinner. He has two slips and a short leg in. One of those slips is Jordan Cox, who... A brutal innings last night of 116 not out. 
sixes raining all over Chelmsford. Here's Critchley to Joe Denley. That's a lovely drive by Joe Denley. Um, up well done, on Porter. the side of the stumps. <laughs> yeah, good stop by Jamie Porter as oh. well for a single. And that is the 50 partnership. And uh, lovely symmetry on the scoreboard as well. Denley JL 24, Denley JK 24 in 88 balls. There we go. That's JL and JK. Indeed. Joseph Liam very... Denley and Jaden Kennick Denley. Well, there was a very famous JK that used to bowl here. Left arm seamer by any chance? Yeah, swing bowler He's from the uh, top end, which used to be known as the Hayes close end. Critchley to Jaden Denley, defended back at him. No run, end of the over. One more goes for Kent, but this uh, Essex attack have all sorts of options. And as Don says, maybe they can turn to a bit of seam. They could have maybe Aaron Beard or Shane Snater pounding down from the top end, or Jamie yeah. Porter maybe. Porter yeah. to bowl one over from oh, the top okay. end to see what happens. In the meantime, it would allow the two spinners to change ends. There we go. Um, I'm thinking back to the East, East and Ackfield, Childs and such times here. Um, where those two spinners used to bowl in tandem and Keith Fletcher would whip them off, swap ends, just to see if anything happens. For me, both spinners, it's, suddenly the bite's gone out of the ball. It's 43 overs old. It's something, you know, Essex need to do something. Yeah, make something happen. We're going to make something happen in the commentary box right now. I'm Matt Cole. I'm going to be replaced by Nicky Chowdhury, who will join Don Topley. Thank you, Matt. Delightful to have Matt Cole, BBC Kent here with us on commentary. Simon Harm around the week, uh, over the wicket now, to the right-handed Denley, who plays with soft hands, plays it quite late, and just into the offside safely, watchfully. Good disciplines here from both Denleys. Jaden's been a little bit more, not aggressive, but positive perhaps. Harmer bowls is down the wicket. That's going to run away for just the one well-fielded Aaron Beard at mid-on. Well bowled, well played. Now Essex have got the left-handed Denley on strike. Porter is in fact loosening up. There you go. Harmer on his way in. Bowls a quicker ball. It's cut out to cover where Wesley does the fielding. There is no run. See Denley JK, youngster, left-hander. is happy to stay on the back foot and plays the ball on the length. Meanwhile, Harmer bowls a quicker ball. Oh, and that's played a miss. That's a beautiful ball. He comes forward, plays forward, and the ball goes outside the edge of JK, the left-handers, Denley's bat. The youngster. The youngster's there, bat aloft, waiting. Harmer bowls. This is well played. Soft hand plays into backward point with the spin. No run. Good evening. Nikki. Good evening. Is it evening? Can we? Uh, it's the evening session, isn't it? Good afternoon. Good afternoon for the post tea session. As Harmer bowls nicely, played into the leg side off the back foot. End of the over, 116 for five. Uh, they still would need 259 to win. That's academic. Can they keep Essex out there for the remaining? 20 odd overs we do have 20 in the last oh hour and the floodlights have just come on as well oh porter's on captain topley got that right <laughs> yeah i agree with that and i would try critchley from this end and send armor up the top end just to see if anything happens at the change of ends it's gone very quiet the ball's gone a bit dull the wicket's gone dull now with the ball 44 overs old. Essex badly need a wicket here. They One do. more wicket and they would be rejuvenated. They do indeed. It's gone a little bit flat. So let's mm. see if bringing Porter back into the attack can spice things up a little bit for Essex. It's going to be the right-handed Denley to face up against Porter, who's... Currently at the top of his mark at the Graham Gooch end and is just having a quick little warm up. We've got a slip leg slip, short leg, short catching mid wicket as here comes Porter and this time Denley's forward and there's a big appeal, the finger yes. goes up, something does happen! Porter comes into the attack and Joe Denley 
is dismissed. He looks disappointed. I, I don't know if, I'm going to be honest, I don't know if that was LBW or whether it hit his pad, hit his bat and ballooned out into the leg side. We had about three or four around the area of square leg and mid wicket. We will find out from the scorers shortly. But the introduction of Porter has brought a wicket. Well done, Tom Wesley. It has indeed. Just looking back on the replay that we have here. Was it LBW or was it caught and ballooned into the leg side? Possibly LBW will look for... I believe the way we saw the reaction from Cushy, who was at short leg, I think it's gone down as caught in the book. And just hearing the announcer at the ground as well. Caught, forward short leg, Feroz Cushy, bowled by Porter, not LBW. Well done, Essex. They ne badly needed that. Got the man, by, uh, Denley. He looked, he looked disappointed with the dismissal, whether he, you know, most, bold, most batsmen know, especially proper batsmen, they know they might get a nick on it or not. Um, in that case, it would have had to have been a nick on to the, to, from the, from the pad to the bat and onto the catch, or whether it was bat first, then the pad, and onto the leg side to Kushi's hands. Yes, his uh, reaction was a little theatrical as well. If you were watching it on the stream, Joe Denny just stood there and put his hand straight to his forehead, a bit of a, oh no, what have you done? Mm. Well, the door is just ajar now. That door had been firmly shut in Essex's face, courtesy of two Denleys, but one has gone. Here's Porter again, and where's Agar, the new batter, plays this straight to mid on. Off the front foot. And suddenly, just after that wicket now, you can sense a bit more energy. Yeah, funny that, isn't it? It is. A little bit more energy out there on the field. Amongst the Essex players, as Porter at the top of his mark turns and starts to steam in towards us. Agar crouched in his stance as forward, doesn't really take a large stride towards the ball, more so just bends from his back, given they're so tall though. Mm. Keep a little low. That's what happens at Chelmsford occasionally on day four. Essex will be delighted if one or two ball balls misbehave. It's been a cracking wicket. Uh, with the Kookaburra ball, it's certainly been uh, a batting friendly wicket. Here's Porter in again. Pass the umpire through his action now, and Agar's sure. forward drives, and it's fielded by Porter on the back end of his follow through. Again, men surrounding the bat here for the new. It's an unusual field, isn't it? One slip, no other catches on the offside, one slip. Forward short leg, short mid wicket, possibly a leggish gully on the leg side. Leg, you know, not a normal conventional gully, a leg gully. And then we also have um, a squarish mid wicket, which is catching. Quite a bizarre field. So Essex, you know, as a batsman, they're going to be bowling dead straight. Here's Porter in again. It's this one, a bit of width off the back foot. It's been punched through the offside. It's not going to go all the way. But they will pick up a couple in the process. And yes, a large offside boundary here at the ground in Chelmsford. Good Bit shot, that. Good shot. Well, probably wasn't where Porter was looking to no, bowl. No. A bit too much width allowing Agar to get his hands through. Where there aren't many fielders, to be perfectly honest, are there? Yeah, not too many. There's a, there's a, a, a mid-off and a, nearly an extra cover. No backward point, no third man. Porter in again. Hagar taps his bat and his forward defends. Bringing through his back leg as it brings up the end of the 45th over. Mm. 118 for six is the score. Lovely email from Andrew Sentence who just says, uh, enjoying the commentary of Essex versus Kent from Chelmsford. 
It's very sad to hear the untimely departure from this world of Derek Underwood. I remember seeing him at the Oval in 69 in a Test match versus New Zealand, where he took six wickets in the first innings, and Alan Ward and Jon Snow had a slugfest at the end of England's first innings, hitting fours and sixes. My first introduction to Test cricket, age 10. Well done, and thank you, Andrew. Simon Harmer starts a new over. It's forced off the back foot. Jaden Denley forces it to Tom Wesley at cover. No run. See, Andrew signed off that email as a bracket to retired economist. Yes, gosh. Dealing with lots of numbers in that profession. <laughs> as uh, Harmer bowls into the leg side, well fielded by the gentleman under the lid who just took a good catch to get the dismissal of Joe Denley who put on a good partnership, family partnership, made in Whitstable Cricket Club, I suggest, as uh, Harmer bowls. This is played and missed down the leg side. No, no chance of a nick there. He saw it was going down the leg side and left it alone. Five Sports Extra has joined us for the conclusion, maybe. Good afternoon, all. Essex. Uh, on the hunt for four more wickets as Harmer bowls another dot ball. 118 for six. Kent would ultimately lead 257 to win. That's academic. There's a chance to keep Essex out there and make a draw. That would be success for Kent. This time Jaden Denley drives back to Harmer on his follow through. He parries it and Mr Porter does the fielding. Rubs it on his rump. So does Harmer. Harmer turns right arm round the wicket to the left-handed Denley. It's a full bunger. This is clipped and it's hit. Cushy. He's OK. He, they take a single as it ricochets to an area where it isn't fielded. No fielders in the vicinity. They take the single and that concludes the end of the over. Jaden Denley is on, I think, 25. And as the scoreboard is about to rotate, 119 for six. And it's going to be Porter to continue from the Graham Gooch end. Yeah, that looked uh, like he wore that one, did for Rose Cushy. The brother firmly struck. He's done a good job to get in the way of it. Fulfilled his, fulfilled his role. Well, the rain that was at Braintree, I think, has shifted in front of us or north of us. So I don't think we're going to get any more rain that's my guess and we are bathed in i'm not going to say warm sunshine but we're bathed in sunshine yeah it's not warm but as long as the sun is out porter can make his way around the wicket now to Jaden denley short ball who pulls it away hasn't got much off its toe end of the bat as it's hit out to mid wicket he'll pick mm. up a single Good move, I think, for Essex to put a man back on the hook. He's played his shots at times, and I think he won't be intimidated, Jaden Denley. So bowl it, Porter bowling a bumper with a man back uh, beneath the pavilion balcony is pretty sensible. I think that's a good tactic, but he's bowling to the tall Australian. Now... Who taps his bat and is now off the back foot looks to pull it again but this one stayed low from Porter and it's fielded by Dean Elgar at short catching mid wicket you've been interested with the snoods today haven't I you? really have yeah. I feel like it's going to be a an accessory isn't it don't they call it ladies call it accessory it's going to be I'm not sure if it's going to catch on the bandwagon this this Saturday season, in but club cricket Right. It looks to keep you warm. As in comes Porter now, past the umpire, over the wicket. And it's a play and a miss. Stumping isn't not it? out. It's an appeal, thinking like maybe has he left his crease? But <laughs> Did you see the keeper then? He went to the umpires, put the tee up. You know, Could we have a review of that? No. I, he's, the keeper's standing up. It was a good piece of keeping, wasn't it? It was lovely. Great piece of keeping. And he's standing up because... Wesley Agar is happy to be out of his crease but if he's standing up he has to come back into his crease which well, you know law of averages chances there's a higher percentage of, of an LB Essex have got a lot of LBs in this game it's Porter to Agar who's again a bit of width played off the back foot and it's fielded 
at cover, but a bit of, not cleanly. So they pick up a single and brings Jaden Denley on to strike. That was the agile, athletic Aaron Beard playing a championship game. If probably Sam Cook, I think, had a bowl at tea time. He's going to be coming back into the side for next week's encounter with Lancashire here in Chelmsford. Here's Porter round the wicket to Denley. He's forward and drives to mid on. There's no run, it's picked up. It's gone directly to mid on. And Sam Cook has become Essex's official vice captain. Intelligent man, formerly at Loughborough University. Uh, father played a lot of club cricket in Norfolk uh, in the 80s. Become a very skillful bowler, as uh, Mickey Lewis told us yesterday. Here's Porter to Denley, and this one slightly coming down the leg side, just gets enough bat on it to run it down fine. And to be fielded by Beard down at fine leg, picks up a single. Denley keeps strike as we come to the end of the 47th over. Kent 122 for six. Now, I still would be interested in swapping the spinners around. Yeah, look, look. Critchley's on at the bottom end at the Sir Alistair Cook. And it, Porter may get one more, or it would be my humble opinion, if I was skipper, I'd bring on Harmer. Porter's done his job, got a wicket, bring on Harmer from the top end, the Graham Gooch end. But for the first time in this innings, Matt Critchley, who'd claimed a five-wicket haul in the first innings together with his hundred, uh, in the first innings is going to bowl from the Alistair Cook end. You seem to be predicting everything that's about to happen, Don. I'm starting to think you may have direct sort of contact with Telepathy. the bears. Um, or like an earpiece in their ears. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> I'm in contact with Tom Wesley. <laughs> Cricket intuition. You learn it. You don't buy it. You can't just have it. You learn it. And that was learnt here over my entire career with two very fine captains. Also playing with the likes of Alan Border as well. As uh, Critchley bowls outside, good line, outside off stump. Very good line for the off spinner who's bowling into the right arm overs foot holes, that, which are at the Graham Gooch end. Porter and, all the, and Wesley Agar made those holes. This time, Jaden Denley goes down the ground. That's an aggressive shot. It was very full bowling the leg spinner into him. Jaden Denley hits that straight back down the ground, just onto the leg side. Very safe, very productive. Good shot from the young man. Lovely looking shot. Essex want Jaden Denley to continue playing his shots as he bowls this time a little straighter and it's bowled and played nicely driven out to Aaron Beard at mid off good looking shot good control good bat face there bowls again a little quicker this goes in the air but safely into the leg side where there is no close catcher just behind square on the leg side Clouds are moving fast here. They're going across us. As Critchley comes in, bowls. That's a good looking ball. Taking a quick single. And he does get in. Good cricket. Good awareness from Jaden Denley. Calls his partner through and they get through. Wesley can't stop the single at mid on. Still a bit of blue sky. Right in the very fast. I would far west I think there's a bit of cloud brewing but Some uh, dark cloud brewing mm. let's hope the wind just blows it through and it misses us yeah send it to Braintree as uh, Critchley bowls this is clipped into the leg side and Agar will take a single sensibly played although against the spin it was very sensibly played and he keeps the strike as Critchley finishes first over. You have to get used to bowling at the different ends. Porter will continue. But I do suspect Harmer won't be... It won't be long before he's reintroduced into the attack. Jumper's getting back on now. 
So I have a look at the bowling figures and the bowling overs, how they've been shared out. Yeah, sure. Take a look and let us know as Porter at the top of his mark running in towards us. Here go on strike and this one just played off the back foot. Beats shot. cover. It's a beautiful shot. Mm. Timed it well. Played it really late. Picks up a couple of runs. Well, he's got the space on the offside. Not too many fielders out there. Just two. Um, but it was a good shot. He stood so tall, waited and then caressed it into the offside. I think that comes naturally to him standing tall. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? Yeah. Porter, six overs. Two, four maidens, two for seven. Obviously, he's gone for nine now. Here's Porter in again, and this one on the leg side has been caught at short mid wicket. It's a brilliant setup here by Essex, and Wes Agar has played directly into their plans. Well, great news for Essex, not so good for Kent. He's just played a beautiful shot through the offside where there are no fielders. But he's now bowled a lot straighter as Porter. And Wesley Agar's clipped it into the leg side where there are basically four in a segment. And he's found one of the men. He's tried to go over their heads, but he failed in doing so. And he's simply hit it head high to the fielder. We'll work out who that is in a minute. But it's one of the many men catching on the leg side just in front of square yeah. and it jordan cox no mm -hmm. it's snater has taken the catch around head high well done jamie porter he's picked up his third wicket i think he's done three for nine three sorry four for 14 he's four for 13 even wow he got uh, a few in the first innings and now he's picking up wickets on, generally speaking, quite a flat wicket with the Kookaburra ball. Yeah, he played straight to their plan there. Maybe had he looked at just keeping it along the ground, one might say, but directly into Snater's hands and didn't really have to move much. Head high, caught it Aussie style. Well, the clouds a gathering <laughs> metaphorically speaking no there's a few over to the west 130s for seven can Essex get the three wickets similar field again just the one slip and a leg slip here's Porter to Gilchrist who's forward and defends into the offside he played well yesterday didn't he I think he got peppered by Aaron Beard and then once he negotiated Aaron Beard, the Essex fast bowler who bowled short at him, Gilchrist, I think, played really well and got some runs, put it together a decent partnership. So what proves to me he is no mug. Here's Porter to Gilchrist, a short ball. He's ducked it this time. Done huh? a good, way, good job to get out <laughs> of the way of it. And we did see a bit of... Gilchrist ducking yesterday as well when he scored 41. So. That's what I mean. He, I, I remember yesterday when the, it was like two innings. When he played the seamer, he didn't it, play so well. Took his eye off the ball by ducking. When he stood tall, he played better. And he played the spinners very well. So, listen, I'm just wondering if es Essex don't like him. They just keep... It's Porter to Gilchrist. And this one, I believe, is going to be leg by as the ball's... Yeah run uh, down towards backward square didn't look right did it no uh, they'll get it with leg by and that and mm. so the skipper wesley's got to decide does he keep critchley on or does he bring back harmer to bowl from the sir alistair cook end certainly north of chelmsford it looks like it could be raining Essex would be praying that that doesn't come way anywhere near New Riddle Street. Chelmsford CM2. Porter to Denley. And Denley's forward and drives straight back to Porter who fields and flicks the ball to his teammate as he brings up the end of the 49th over the score. 131 for 7. Denley on 31. New batter Gilchrist yet to get off the mark. Essex need three more wickets. 
Would they be able to get that done in time before these heavy clouds to the right hand side of our commentary box make their way or are they going to fly through? The many weather followers around Essex are talking to us. They've sent an email in saying, I think we have heavy showers here in Harlow right now. Now, Harlow is... Uh, that that probably will come towards us as uh, Critchley bowls. This goes into the leg side. Gilchrist gets off strike. We to see if that's off the bat or the pad. It's off the bat. One run to Gilchrist, which brings Jaden Denley on 31 not out. Priceless runs. Priceless experience for the young Denley. He's facing round the wicket from Critchley. Plays it on the back foot. It turns sharply, but he's negotiated that particularly well. Well played, young man. Great education for this. Can he help his side to safety? Critchley bowls. This turns and goes in. And Jaden Denley plays into the leg side. No run. Yeah, I'm a bit worried about rain in Harlow. I do think that might be coming this way where Braintree wouldn't. As Critchley on his way. Bowles gives it a bit of loop. Is a Oh, not the best shot. He's got, uh, I think, an inside edge which goes down to very fine. No, it's, yeah, it was an edge. Goes down to fine, fine third man where there is the two runs. The left-hander stays on strike. That did not go where he intended he to play that shot at all. He looked to mm. go big with that one through Little, the onside. And would it be fair to say slightly more agricultural? This time it turns. A little quicker, played into the leg side, off the back foot. There is no run. 134 for seven. I'm looking at the overs, 14.1. There's Critchley Bowles, a good ball. This time he drags Jaden Denley forward, played into the offside. He does the fielding, and there is the end of the over. Run. 34 for seven, Denley 33, and to face Wesley Agar on one. 50 overs gone and slowly everyone seems to be having a look to the right hand side. Is this rain going to reach us? You said we've had a few messages mm. saying it's raining in Harlow. So will yeah. that get to us? Well, I'm seeing gloves being put on. Gloves and beanies to the stand on our right. As spectators are oh. trying to get themselves warm. As in comes Porter now. And this one's a left alone by Gilchrist. Terry Sparks. He's just outside of Chelmsford Tile Kiln. He says it's raining here, and according to my weather radar, rain will maybe with us in just after five minutes. No. Such a shame. Hopefully there will be enough time for Essex to wrap it up. Jaden Denley is hoping the rain will come and he will save his side with a draw. Here's Porter, and this time Gilchrist is forward and just... Full face of the bat just plays it directly to mid on. It's a dot ball. Real education for Jaden Denley here. Um, Uncle Joe departed not that long ago. Wesley Ager after him. But the pair of them played really well, and Essex needed to do something to get a wicket. Here's Porter running in towards us again one more time. And this one. Oh. Is goes down the leg side and I believe he gets a bit of bat on it. it runs down towards the fine leg boundary and it will add four to the total as it moves on to 138 for seven slightly too straight from the line porters ideally been wanting to bowl at it was a safe shot Matt Critchley at leg slip dived s sort of towards the keeper at leg slip but Alas, he couldn't stop it. Here's Porter in again, and this one left alone by Gilchrist outside the off stump. Straight into the gloves of Pepper, who again stood up to the stumps. And the breeze is just about mm. getting stronger now. As you can see, the players' hands in pockets and starting to shake their legs around, trying to do anything to keep themselves warm. It is not cricketing weather right now, as in comes Porter. And this one, straight delivery, and it's played straight into the onside by Gilchrist. Yeah, you've got to believe it might happen, whether you're trying to save the game or whether you're trying to win the game. 
I think we might find we're going to be bowling straighter again and we're going to have a, another leg side fielder. We are. I think are Dean Elgar is coming into Two that position. Two men at back pad on the leg side. One very straight. Gosh, how many have we got in that sector? One behind square. Maybe yeah, one behind square. I think forward short leg is under the lid. Here's Porter, this one, and it's again goes down the leg side. I believe this is going to go down as buys. It'll just be one. Yes, umpire's mm, signal to the school it. box. Round we go. Come and on. Brings up the end of the 51st over, 139 for seven. Despite the artificial light, I am worried about the light now. Well, the umpires are just having a conversation with themselves. They've gone up to each other, quickly said a word or two. No. The spinners are on. Right, is this the twen 20 overs from now? 16. 16, is it? 16 overs in the final hour. It's uh, Porter puts both sweaters on. I think he's got two sweaters to put on. So, Will Essex, we're looking to our right, westerly, to see what there is. Look, it might skirt round us, it might only be a shower, because in the very far west I'm looking, I think it's actually quite lighter. Harmer starts a new over. Instead of Critchley, this goes down the leg side, it's turned, it's gonna run away for one, two, did... It's starting to rain, my colleague is telling me, it's buys. It's only... I don't think that went for four buys, did it? They're going off. It's raining and the two Kent batsmen are running to the gate, to the pavilion. Alas, I, I'm going to say there's a chance we will be at, out there in due course because it is quite light. It all depends how long this rain, be it a shower or more, is with us. But at... 139 for seven. Essex are still in the ascendancy. The hoop covers are coming on. But I am confident we will get more play. But for the time being here at Chelmsford, we will just have a little blow, powder our nose, and just do the things we need to do while we're off air. And if there's any further play, we will rejoin you in the small matter of hopefully 10 to 15 minutes. Thank you. Nick Hobbs has dropped.
There is no rotor. <laughs> We're free and uh, a very good afternoon again and welcome back the umpires are out there we didn't have to put too many sheets on I'm pleased to uh, suggest the umpires are out there the stumps are about to go in the Essex fielders searching for three more wickets are out there uh, they're in a huddle they are now marching towards the wicket the uh, tractor together with the rope is being towed all the way around the outfield to try and dry the excess moisture on the grass. And Miss Nikki Chowdhury is freezing. <laughs> I'm absolutely frozen. Oh, you know, come You've on. You've got the window open and it's quite breezy outside. And Just as well you're not from the north. I don't think I could hack it. Do you want to put my coat on? I'm all right. I'm going to... Anthony can pass over I'm going to take it. I'm going to... You're going to be hard. Hard school. But I don't right. think I could... I, I couldn't do it. If you told me to live up north, I'd... I'd run away. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Right. Look, you can see the moisture on the rope going around. Uh, plenty of that out there. But Essex are happy to play on. The conditions are fit to play. Essex are in the field with the ball. And uh, we're looking around to see who's going to take the ball. Was it an incomplete over? What was it? I can't remember. Let's have a look on the scorecard. 51.1. So somebody had commenced a new over. The umpires are calling for the Kent batsman. 11.5 remaining. 11.5 remaining. Well spotted, Matt Cole. Your BBC team here today, Don Topley, Nicky Chowdhury and BBC Kent's Matt Cole. Matt's been here on a good number of the days. I think you've been here three of the four, Matt. I have. But yes, good, good man, good man. You've been great entertainment, hugely informative and a very fine broadcaster. So thank you for that. And uh, the two Kent fellows are walking out. Jaden Denley, 33 not out. And he has played very responsibly. And uh, with him is the taller Mr Gilchrist, who has also played OK while he's been out there. Scored a very good 40, 41. Yeah, he scored a good 41 yesterday. And then at the moment, just pretty fresh to the crease. As Essex 140 for seven. Bill Chris just got five to his name now, and Junior Denley, 33. That's now, you as a batsman, Nicky, will know about this. Will that short break have upset Jaden Denley's concentration? Five balls left of this over. Harmer is on the way in, and oh, he's played a miss, and how on earth? He'll be asking, has that missed the stumps? He's played it on middle and leg. It's turned and beaten the off stump. How did it miss? <laughs> Jaden Denley standing tall with the bat. Bowles, this is played off the back foot, slightly shorter. Negotiated that very well. What a great education this is. You've got to save the game for your team as a young batter against an international class off spinner. Again, Harmer Bowles played in to the leg side. They take a quick single and uh, they cannot stop it. That's an easy single, sensible single. 140 for seven. Right. Gilchrist now facing Harmer. Harmer knows the ball's just got a little bit wet. You've just seen him trying to dry the seam on his left rump as he's wandered back to his bowling mark. He's in. He bowls short. Played into the offside. It runs down to short third man. No run. The ball will be wet now. It will be. Let's see what Harmer does with it. Look. He's drying it on his jumper this the seam is the most important thing for him as he grips it with his first two fingers or he splits the ball between those two fingers and he wants to get a grip when it's damp it's harder this time he bowls very full smothered by by Gilchrist to conclude the end of a good over from Kent played that nicely and the score is 141 for seven and there is just 11 overs remaining what would you do who would you bowl now 
Duval Porter, Critchley, Snater. Critchley. Will they? Could they, Matt? I'm looking at you. Do you think they could? Well, get they have because look who's just come on at the other end. Critchley. Do you think we could get more than 11 in? I don't think so. Not the final hour. I don't think. But Is there a the, the, the time? If they can bowl more than 11 in Yes. Minutes, well, two so spinners. I I, I, yeah, I guess. Well, if they get through, they, if they get through. Here comes Critchley. And this time Denley's <laughs> forward and defends. And there's a sort of half-hearted appeal of some sorts. That was a theatrical jump by Dean Elgar at Silly, silly Mid-Off. Critchley in again round the wicket this time Denley's back and defends it turn, closing his bat face into the onside there's no run and Critchley now getting the towel out drying the ball as well the seam so important for a leg spinner as well otherwise it's just gonna slip out of his hands as in he comes again past the umpire around the wicket and Denley plays this off the back foot picked up it he, he looks happier to play Critchley off the back foot, doesn't he? Which is good play on his part, really. Critchley wants to get him coming forward, but Denley's happy to play on the back foot. Here's Critchley and again. This one a bit more flight, and Denley's forward and doesn't quite time it well enough. He's towed it. It's gone in over to 45. It's not going to be a run. There's Critchley again at the top of his mark, which is just six, seven paces away. And this time, Denley again, off the back foot. Closes the face of the bats, gone straight to mid-wicket. The whole squad making a right effort to keep the ball dry and dry it up. Mm. As this time, Denley's forward and defends into good the run. offside. And good run. A really good choice of run there as well keeping the strike as we end the 53rd over 142 for 7 the score yeah that was taking the responsibility keeping the strike getting the bowler to just stand at the uh, non-strikers end yep right Essex are turning to Harmer they need him to start this over putting the left hander under pressure or if they could get Denley out, could it be Denley and Curtains, or will Denley save the day? We'll f soon find out in about 40 minutes as Harmer bowls. This is manipulated into the leg side to find leg saving the one, probably 45 saving the one rather. There is no run, no mem no one's back on the boundary. Harmer's got a towel, he's rubbing the ball like every club player would do on a Saturday afternoon. He's actually deposited the towel behind the umpire. As Harmer comes in, bowls, gives it a lot of loop. It's played into the floor, almost yorked Jaden Denley, but he's got his back down in time. Yeah, I was about to say, I'm not sure you're allowed to put the cloth on the floor. You must hand it to the umpire, which the umpire has now received it. Palmer on his way in, round the wicket, quicker delivery, squirts into the offside, backward point does the fielding, no chance of a run. Receives the towel from the umpire, goes back to Harmer, they know they have to bowl with this wet ball, otherwise it's going to be a draw. Can they get a bit of purchase? Harmer bowls a quicker ball, which is played on the back foot, and he watchfully just plays it back down the ground for no run. Nice and straight is Joe Denley here. Kent's, well, Kent's hopes are on this youngster, young Jaden Denley, Whitstable, and this time it's played again off the back foot, played into the feet of Dean Elgar at Silly Midoff. Four men round the bat, a ring on both sides as Harmer's in bowls. Bit more loop, 
driven out to Beard at mid-off. Beard collects it, he passes it rugby style to his mate, the captain Tom Wesley. And they should be jogging around now as Matt Critchley will take the next over. Critchley now just, again, remarking his run-up. As he's going to be bowling to the right-handed Gilchrist. And now just trying the ball from his partner. Taking the ball from mid-off. I think who is on towel duties mm. today as Critchley's ready and he comes and Gilchrist is forward. Defends. Picked up by Critchley from his follow through. We've got two slips in place. A silly point. Short leg. Critchley in again and Gilchrist is forward and bottom edge is this one into the onside. It's quickly picked up by a scurrying short leg as again Gilchrist in his stance low taps his bat is forward and this one gets a thickish edge on it and it's going to run down towards third they'll pick up a single and we're going to see a change in the field again Critchley again remarking his run up now to go round the wicket to the left handed Jaden Denley top of his mark and he comes round the wicket Denley's forward and plays this into the onside directly to mid wicket it's picked up by Shane Snater again Critchley passes the umpire and this one's left alone by Denley outside the off stump interesting decision there with the leg spinner bringing it back into him. It's had a little bit of width on it. It's actually again. Oh. And more width on it. And this Good one's shot. cut away. He's waited for it. Played it really late. And I'll pick up, a, pick up two actually. As we bring up the end of the over. 145 for seven. After 55 overs. Denley... With 37 and Gilchrist on six. Doesn't keep the strike this time though. He's going to give his partner the opportunity. Right, we're down to. Is it eight overs? I couldn't quite see. Is because of the sunlight on the scoreboard? Eight overs or 33 minutes. Oh. We might get through more than eight as uh, four men round the back. Harmer's in around the wicket to the right-handed Gilchrist who plays on the front foot. There is no run. The ball in the damp has gone a bit soft now, I'm sure. Harmer's looking for a little bit of magic here. What can he do? Can he get one to turn and bounce as he bowls round the wicket? Quicker ball. And this is played into the offside. There is no run. What else can Essex do? Maybe, and of course, bat pad on the leg side can't get closer because if you look at his shadow, when he's standing up, it's already on the wicket. So he has to crouch and the batsman can complain and the umpire can say to a forward short leg, move back because you should not have your shadow on the strip. The umpires are now conferring and I believe this is Simon Harmer's complained about the ball. Whether the stitching has swollen in the dampness, the wet outfield. And they're looking at it, the umpires Ian Blackwell and uh, son of David Lloyd, Graham Lloyd, looking. And they're asking again. They're looking at it again. I don't know if somebody, if, if the Essex lads have complained about the stitching. Uh, the umpire, certainly both umpires are wearing gloves. They've got their white jackets, but black gloves, haven't they? Matches uh, the trousers. Matches, the, well, yes. 
White gloves would be a bit dangerous, I think. White hats, white jacket, black trousers, white shoes, black gloves. They'd look like a magician with white <laughs> gloves, wouldn't they? <laughs> Harmer, who isn't a magician? This is driven out into the offside, very full, no run, filled a, 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 a point. All gone quiet again. Kent are negotiating this quite well. Gilchrist to face. Quicker ball. Played on the back foot. Watchful. If it had missed it, it would have been rather close for an LBW shout. But Gilchrist did not miss it. Four men round the bat. 145 for seven. Jaden Denley on 37 watching. This time, oh, is a play and a miss as Gilchrist goes back. And he looks to force it gently into the offside, but genuinely plays and misses. It goes through to the keeper, Pepper. Armour again, right arm over the wicket. This gives it a bit of air, and it's quite full. And Gilchrist jumps onto that and hits it straight over Harmer. Down for four runs to a very straight mid-off. And that was a calculated good thump from the tall number nine Kent Batsman well if it's all right with Nicky I'm going to suggest to Nicky that you continue the commentary for this over and then if it's all right for the last half hour we bring in the professional from BBC Kent who will try try and describe and eke out a draw for his beloved Kent County Cricket Club of course is that okay I hope you've enjoyed your first foray to Chelmsford. It's been great. Yes, right, even though it's a little cold, but it's we've seen a fair bit of sun. Here's Critchley around the wicket, and there's a big shout, but I think it's sliding down. Yeah, not umpire, you, me, we're not interested, are we? Not interested, it's, especially from the angle we are at either. It doesn't, it doesn't look too hopeful. Is Critchley in again, and... This time, Denley's forward and pads it away. Yeah. Haven't seen that in a long time, I must say. That, that's, that's from the Priestfield Stadium, Gillingham. That was a good kick, wasn't it? He kicked it away, didn't play a shot, no chance of an LB. Critchley to Denley again is forward this time and plays it into the offside. It's a dot ball. Again, we've got that crisscross happening out there in the middle as Critchley's in and then leads forward, defends straight down the wicket. Well played, young man. Looking good at the moment. Looking good with his 37 runs, but he's batted a long time. He has. Critchley in over the wicket this time, and this is just tucked away to 45. It's not going to be a run there. Just... Playing around with his angles now is Critchley over the wicket, round the wicket, over the wicket. Mm, now he's gonna, right. It's going to go round, wick, round the wicket once more. And this time Denley's forward, lunges in to his defence, and it concludes the 57th over, 149 for seven. Joe, Jaden Denley playing a fantastic role. He's been batting time out here, and he's. Starting to look very comfortable. 37 to his name. Gilchrist with 10. I'm going to see the, some more of Harmer from the Alistair Cook end. Nikki, marvellous. Thank you so much for your contribution for this game it's been great to meet you great to work with you you've been terrific fun as Harmer bowls and this is played into the offside there is no run and may I wish you a very safe journey home this evening thank you it's been an absolute pleasure I'll make way for Matt Cole now Harmer second ball of this over runs in bowls and this is played off the back foot very diligently carefully responsibly by the tall uh, Gilchrist, who's on 10. Jaden Denley on 37. Harmer again. Four men hunched down, waiting for something to happen. This is Yorked, dug out by Gilchrist, smartly and sensibly. Playing really responsibly, Matt. 
Absolutely, yeah. He he was biffing the ball around in the first innings, but you're right. He's uh, doing his utmost. Little quicker, played off the back foot again. It comes back to Harmer. It's gone dull with this dampish ball, but Essex need to find a little bit of magic. Can they do it? They have technically 5.2 overs as uh, Harmer comes in. Gives it a bit of air. He comes forward this time, smothers the spin. It just bounces out towards Dean Elgar at silly point. If they keep no this run. up, they'll have more than the 5.1 overs now because uh, it's a minimum of 16 in the last hour, isn't it? That's right, the minimum, as this time Harmer completes the end of his over. Not a lot's happening for the South African or indeed the leg spinner that came from Derbyshire who is taking his jumper off and presenting it to the umpire. He will continue from the Graham Gooch end. And uh, we're bathed in beautiful sunshine now, albeit still very chilly. And I'm sure the... The stalwart supporters here today have finished their flasks of tea and coffee, have eaten their sandwiches, but they're here to the dying embers to see if Kent can survive or can Essex find those three wickets. Critchley to the 18-year-old Jaden Denley now. Just sticks in the pitch a little bit as he tries to deflect that down the onside. Michael Pepper was interested if there was some sort of edge there, but he hasn't hit it and it's no run. So yeah, the bowling are over so quickly here. It's, it's such a rarity that in the last hour of the game we'll get more than 16 overs, but with the two spinners on and getting through over as quickly as Denny defends this one back up the pitch. He's got company with uh, a short leg for Ozkushi. It's a man a little on the offside as well. Jordan Cox with a snood high up on his ears. This was quicker by Christian. Not a great delivery, actually. It up as a bit of a long hop for Jaden Tenley. <laughs> he's turned it to the onside. And Matt Christie just sort of shrugged at his wicketkeeper there. Not quite sure why, but brings Nathan Gilchrist on to strike anyway. The 150 is up. Unsurprisingly, no one is applauding that at this point. Mm. They're absolutely all attention uh, on the pitch out there to see ball by ball on the BBC what's going on oh edge oh, between the two slips it was low anyway yeah, yeah. so I don't know if it carried no. to Jordan Cox or Simon Harmer they're looking disconsolate as it went between them just dribbled between them yeah. Nathan Gilchrist just turned around maybe just gave a, a bon mot a word <laughs> to uh, to Jordan Cox about how well he played that I'm not sure but uh, well Harmer has got on his knees a bit like Trescothic did to get Closer, because that ball just dropped yeah, short of the slips. Could call this from Simon Harmer, I think. Low crouch from Jordan Cox at one as well. Left outside the off stump by Gilchrist. Trusting the spin will take it away from the off stump. And it does. One more ball. Still 23 overs. Sorry, 23 overs. 23, 23 minutes, minutes yeah. available. Will, if Essex want them, they'll bowl more or if they need them they'll bowl more than the 16 in the shot, last hour that's a lovely shot, shot from Nathan Gilchrist a, a gentle cover drive and uh, they'll just take the one will they and Gilchrist will still strike for the following over well there we go yes. it shows confidence. A lot of confidence in his own ability and Jaden Denley's not saying let's not run leave it to me squire uh, well, they've put on 22 yeah or is it 23 um, 20 yeah, 23 now. Yeah, they, they, they both look comfortable. And that's no disrespect to Essex. I just wonder... I, look, I'm thinking out of the box, as I often do. Mm. And, you know, it's good to think about the game. And What's the opportunity? Essex could bring back a seamer. Yeah. Or... That'll slow the game down. Yeah. Correct. It'll that take would time out of the game. eat into the time available. Or they could bolt... Dean Elgar, left arm spin for one over. As Harmer bowls, this is played off the pad into the leg side. No chance of a run nor a dismissal. Bit of a nerdle, it looked like, but yes, absolutely. So they're doing their very best with a, a wet, soft kookaburra ball here. But if any two spinners are going to do it in this country, it's probably going to be Harmer and Critchley. He bowls, plays off the back foot, does the tall, taller Gilchrist. Very sensibly concentration here they've got to try and find a bit of magic to open the door can Essex do it four men round the bat 
Harmer bowls, that's a good delivery, negotiated well into the offside, it bounces off Elgar at silly point. I think for Essex, one wicket could easily bring two, could, could bring three, couldn't it, at this stage, just the psychological pressure, it's just getting that one might just be the tipping point. Harmer bowls, another good ball, quite well pitched up from Harmer, I'm wondering if he should, to a tail ender like this, just come round the wicket now for the remainder or for a ball or two from this over. Harmer over the wicket though, bowl straight and almost Yorker length which is dug out very smartly from Gilchrist. There is no run. Long shadows now. Bat pad on the leg side has to crouch to ensure he's not on the wicket. And this is played back to Harmer to conclude that over. Will Critchley continue? Yeah, it's a maiden from Simon Harmer. One or two and supporters Dean Elgar, are leaving. Did you see him warming up? He's just gone. No. He's taken his cap off. There as you he, go. No, he's taking it back. Yeah. Oh, I he had the helmet on. That's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. I just thought for a moment they're going to take your advice again. Don, yeah. I, I, Have you played this game before at all? One fifty-three for seven. Just got to think out of the box. It. Where's we got to just something's got to happen. Find a bit of. Bit of luck, bit of magic. Jamie Porter, the seamer. So, so they are turning to seamers. Yeah. So maybe, as you say, they just feel that this game is drifting away from them. Minimum of three overs left. So even with the seamer on, they'll bowl more than that, you would have thought. 19, is that right? 19 minutes. Jaden Denley's go. just got to be careful and get his thinking hat back on. He's Porter around the wicket to Jaden Denley. Good soft hands, plays it into the offside. He's got a slip and a leg slip for company. Short leg. Jordan Cox at, I'm saying a shortish cover, but he's actually jogging back now. Halfway to the boundary. It's a, a square leg, two thirds of the way there. Do you bump him? Deepish Would you bump him? Mid on and mid off. I don't know if you do with this feel. I suppose they have got a deepish square leg there as well, but Porter bowls now to him and then leads just settles on the off stump and deflects that out, guides it to, jo to uh, Jordan Cox at extra cover, no run. Two balls gone. So as you can tell from the, uh, the speed of deliveries, of course, from the uh, haze close end with Jamie Porter, this is taking a bit longer and Essex were trying to get through their overs quickly to at least put themselves in a position where they might be able to bowl more than the 16 in the final hour. Porter now bowls to Jaden Denley. That's a pull away. Aggressive there. The outfield really has slowed down. No surprise there. They'll come back for a very leisurely two. It's picked up, I think, by Snater on the, uh, the leg side boundary. Nice looking pull that from Jaden Denley. Safety first, though. Kept it low. They come through for two. Three to come from Jamie Porter. Uh, dispatching Dean Elgar down to deep, fine leg. Will they dig this one in, do you think, Don? Because of that, I wonder. Are they looking for him to hook? Well, it's, it's a big call for Jamie Porter with the softish oh, ball, 60 overs, 60 overs old. Yeah, keeper is up to the stumps, left outside the off stump by Jaden Denley. Porter is quite tired. He will have bowled a few overs yesterday as well. Um, his side need him to find just something, whether a ball that nips back or keeps low. Or at the moment, Essex are hoping Jaden Denley plays a a bit of a poor shot to get his wicket. It's been a fantastic education. That's so for far, four for nineteen for Porter drive by Denley into the offside and so far he's coped with the psychological pressure really well even yep. getting this far 40 from 105 balls on debut 18 years old with was on a pair as well all over the place yeah absolutely kent in real trouble when he came in at 65 for five they were when he came in before t and looking like that was that for Ken? They've held out this long, but Essex still have a word to say about it. Porter, slower delivery, maybe. He's just nudged that into the onside, Jaden Denley, and he's taken the strike for the following over as well. So a minimum of two left, but there's 16 minutes left uh, in this game. Uh, I'm assuming... Five overs. I've not been, been this way many times, but yes, uh, I think they'll need to start their last over 
the same as you would before yeah. an interval before the clock ticks over to six o'clock and Simon Farmer will continue I think yes he will indeed bowling at uh, Denley the left hander I think yep Jane Denley dropped no. through for a single at the end of the last over he has can't say or congratulate so far how well he's played but uh, four men join him around the bats the keepers up against him and Harmer's on his way around the wicket. He finds a ball that turns. And he plays and misses on the front foot. What a gorgeous delivery there from Simon Harmer. Turns it too much. Beats the outside edge. He's in again. A little quicker, shorter. Played on the back foot. And there is no run. Thank you, Chris, from Sunny Brighton for your email. Uh, thank you so much for your compliments about the commentary but as he says what an absorbing final day's cricket county cricket is the game he says Harmer a lot of air and this has gone and it's been missed I think at first slip is that Jordan Cox who scored a yep. marvellous hundred well I think it's gone low to his right just bes between him and the keeper no I do him an injustice my apologies Mr Cox it was by ah, so go. it's turned beat the batsman beat the keeper and gone for buys great delivery again mr harmer sorry mr cox as harmer bowls gives it a lot of air is driven with the spin sensibly smartly to mid off no run one of the four around the bat is on his knees to catch played on the back foot into the leg side no run this really would make the game of it if Essex could get a wicket here Harmer in again bowls a quicker delivery which turns and moves away the keeper takes it nicely to conclude the 62nd over Kent 158 for seven it's got nothing to do with uh, how many runs they need simply to keep Essex out there for a few more overs maybe another 15 14 maybe 13 minutes as uh, Kent look to save this game at the moment the points would be oh I can't see because of the um, sunshine on the low sunshine I think it is seven and four points isn't it Ah oh, yes, seven and four. Seven for Essex, four for Kent. But will they take another eight points home to Canterbury? Here's Critchley then to Gilchrist, who uh, faces the first. Oh, that, yeah, sorry. The, uh, <laughs> the, uh, what the announcement was going to be there, but it's just the change of bowlers. Oh, the first ball has been bowled, so Denley 41 from 112. What an effort. And Gilchrist is backing him up here as well. Leaves it outside the off stump. Bit of a yelp because it was low, but it was wide too. It was always turning away from uh, Nathan Gilchrist. Can they hold out, Kent? It seemed unlikely, inconceivable against this Essex assault. 65 for 5 they were just before T. Oh, that's a great delivery. <laughs> They're not done yet. And that's beaten a push outside the off stump by Nathan Gilchrist. And to say, I just think Jaden Denley's got ice in his veins. 18 years old and uh, he's leading this Kent defence, if you like, as Gilchrist pushes forward into the offside and there's no run. The ball, as we know, may well have, may well be much more difficult to get much out of for these, uh, these spinners, but Essex have found a way so often. Full length delivery, Gilchrist just they bats it up towards the man at and that's Wesley at mid-wicket shortish mid-wicket as well surrounded by fielders is the tall Bold. Kent bowler back foot defends it off the stumps and that is the end of another over another maiden over from Matt Critchley one for 39 of 16 <laughs> he has the umpires are sending the 12th man off they say there's no reason for you to be out here Jaden Denley, I think, asked for a drink. No, they're sending. They are. Yeah. They're dispatching him. Yeah. 
They wise that. Is, I'd like to see more of that, frankly. That's good umpiring, Not isn't it? Trying to do this. Of course, another are. game, I'd be fine with it. This one, I, I, yeah. I think it's. I think it, he needs a drink very badly. Yeah. <laughs> Mac, old BBC Kent. Well, Look, it BBC is Kent, good yeah. play. Good call from the umpire. Little professionalism going on there. Let's start from in the next youngster. game. Yeah. Next game. Oh, is a playing a miss or is he out? Essex go up, but it's no given. Not out by the umpire. Was it caught behind? It was a great delivery. Harmer last over beat the bat twice. He just beat the bat again there with a the ball that turned sharply. Felt like it Three. almost did too much. Yes, yeah. another oh. good delivery. They've gone up for a game. No, that's a half-hearted appeal. Essex are excited with the last two balls. That was There's much better, wasn't it? That really was close to everything. From those Harmer. were those two, two, yeah, two brilliant deliveries. deliveries. Harmer in again round the wicket. Bold, he watches that carefully, plays it on the back foot. Nice and straight. There'll be a quicker ball. One of these balls this over will be a quicker ball. Will he hang back? He comes forward and plays it nicely. Goes with the spin. As the spin goes into the offside, he plays with the spin. Sensibly, smartly. Great education this. Bowls again, leaves it alone. Watchful now with a ball that he previously might have played and played and missed. Denley's happy to leave that well alone. Armour turns quickly, comes in, gives it a bit of air, smothers the ball, completes an over. Well played, Joe, uh, Jack, Jaden Denley, J.K. Denley, or bold Simon Armour. What have we got left? We have... Um well, overs wise or time wise, it's going to be time wise, of course, isn't it? Nine minutes, I reckon. So, two or three Let's overs the there. Three overs clock coming up soon. We haven't got oh. the clock here. At oh, Johnson. now they shouldn't be allowed to bring helmets on. That's just delaying the game. <laughs> <laughs> should be the same for both sides. Uh, <laughs> There's going to be another one close to the wicket. Yeah, nine minutes. So yeah, we we have. Essex have bowled the minimum required for the last hour, and so it's all on time now. So, as, uh, as your schoolmasters used to say, it's your own time you're wasting. Correct. But, well said. But they want to have everything worked out, don't they? And actually, a delaying game puts more pressure on these Ken Paird, I think, doesn't it? They've got into a rhythm, maybe just to upset it. Reset Five field. round the back. Oh. oh, no, Critchley can't believe that. Was that the Googly? Was it the one, the Toppy? Didn't really turn, I don't think. But my word, that was a great leave, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, as you say, I think at, at the very least went on the on with the arm. And that's uh, defence. Sorry, it's my over, isn't it? Sorry, it is. The tension's rising. I forgot to talk. It's <laughs> <laughs> a first for everybody. Uh, <laughs> yes, Critchley. Oh, speaking of miss, a play and a miss by uh, by Gilchrist outside the off stump. And uh, swept the bales off, did Michael Pepper as well, with one movement so quick. But Nathan Gilchrist has survived. I'm not quite sure. He's clinging on a bit. This is nail-biting stuff. White knuckle ride. And this one's shorter. And the googly, was it? Yeah, yeah. came into the pads of, uh, of Gilchrist. And he's defended it in a fashion at his feet. Brilliant. Five men he's round done the enough. Back. Four on the offside. This is county cricket. And... Left outside the off stump again. It's a long lean outside the off stump. The long levers of uh, Nathan Gilchrist. Ball to come of Critchley's over of his 17th with seven minutes left of this final day. Available to <laughs> Essex. Oh. Quicker delivery. And uh, Gilchrist gets right behind that one. And another over's gone by. So uh, maybe two more. I think they'll struggle to get more than that. But maybe two more overs. Three wickets to take. As I said, I think one brings two, maybe brings three. Harmer to continue from the Sir Alistair Cook end. Yeah, they're taking their time here, aren't they? Understandably yep. so. Yep. Just making the feel. Well, Jaden Denley, yeah. sorry, he's adjusting his gloves. Is he allowed to do that, yes, Don? Is that, is yeah, that all right with you? Acceptable. Is that all right with everyone here at I'm Essex? surprised he hasn't taken his guard again. But okay. He's facing Harmer. Harmer bowls a good ball, which is plays and misses that was a fantastic delivery will the rain 
thwart Essex together with Kent saving the game. Harmer in again. Bowles very full, smothers it. Does Jaden Denley plays it back to Simon Harmer? No run. He jogs back. Everyone's waiting for Jaden Denley to get into his stance. He comes in, gives he yorks him, of which is dug out by the left-handed junior Denley into backward point. No run. So plenty of men round the bat. Five men now, four on the offside, one on the leg side. And he pulls away because he wasn't ready. Armour has to wait. Armour's ready. So is Denley. Denley with bat aloft. Comes forward, plays with the open face, with the spin. Sensibly to backward point. No chance of a dismissal. Two. Maybe two overs after this one mm. if they need. Getting through this one so quickly. Harmer bowls a little quicker but shorter which he goes back and plays with the full face of the bat to the leg side no chance of a dismissal there runs does a bit of gardening now slowly walks back Harmer's ready Denley isn't he is now he's on his way bowls a little quicker delivery and another beautiful delivery which he drives at it's a genuine play and a miss through to the keeper who takes the bails off but but Jaden Denley is still in the crease the umpires are talking we have a couple of overs left they're probably look asking when do we conclude this game yeah. how many overs there is no clock on no the clock pavilion check so i don't know if they're going to check from the yes the digital clock on the on the scoreboard yes we would What's normally the take the clock on the pavilion but it's being repaired oh there we go uh, i according to my watch we've got about 15 minutes left <laughs> Is Critchley to uh, Gilchrist surrounded? Oh my goodness me! We we're talking about that fantastic photo of Derek Underwood taking a a, um, a wicket, and this is a very similar scene with with uh, against mm. Australia oval 68. A very similar scene. This one's it is. just defended away. So, Nine uh, around lovely, the bat. Lovely symmetry. Yeah. The absolutely. only one away from the bat is backward point. Yeah. The only one. Nine around the bat. Two dot balls. Gilchrist faces the third. This one's a little bit shorter. And he whips that away, Gilchrist. That's a really good contact from the uh, from the bowl, to be fair. That's nice batting. It's four runs. I reckon that might have been a seamer. It was a little quicker, from but shorter Critchley. from Critchley. Just changing things up. Well, the we're coming there, to the final West moment. Has, has flown to the boundary, more or less, to... Uh, to pick that one up, Critchley, another, oh, it's, oh! it's a low one again, not sure it would have carried, again it's low between Harmer and Cox, and that will go for four more, will it, no, they'll come back for three, in fact, Aaron Beard are throwing it back in, uh, no, it's just, sorry, just the two, it is just the two, that I was close though, Jordan Cox is deciding he's just going to lie on the ground, he's not probably even going to get up. I don't but think that carried all the way to the fielder, I don't think just so, just short. One six four for seven. Kent just trying to defend these three wickets. Essex trying desperately now to take one before the clock ticks over to six o'clock. Uh, the tension is palpable around this ground, I have to say. It's bad enough for the commentary box, let alone for the supporters out there. Here's Critchley to Gilchrist defends that back at the bowler and there is no run. 19 Gilchrist, 41 Jaden Denley. That doesn't matter. 164 doesn't matter. Seven wickets down does matter. Two minutes to go. I think this will be the last over of the day. If anyone in county cricket, Don Topley, is going to take you three wickets in a final <laughs> over of a county championship match, yeah. I think Simon Harmer might be the one you'd pick out of your, uh, out of your pool, wouldn't he? Yeah, maybe. Maybe. He's got to go and make a name for himself for the final over, we believe, of this game. It's been a very intriguing game of four-day cricket. Harmer's in, and this is bowled very full and just driven back to the bowler on his follow-through. Um, thank you very much to everybody who has contributed with the tweets and the emails. This is a quicker ball that turns and turns what from wide through to the keeper who 
catches it well. No chance of a wicket out there. But uh, Matt, it's been great to have your company for the, the days that we've been here. Four to come. As Harmer bowls. It's outside off stump. Another quicker delivery and left alone. Jaden Denley. Will he be Kent's hero of the evening? I wonder if he may be put up for interview as Harmer bowls. So this is played with the spin as it moves away from the left-hander. And, and I think they are about it's a draw. to shake hands. Yeah. And they have... The captain, Tom Wesley, has gone up to the two batsmen. Harm has gone up to the umpire. Matt Cole, BBC Kent, fully deserved. Jaden Denley, how well has he played in his debut performance to save the defeat of Kent? Absolutely brilliant from Jaden Denley. 41 of 128 balls, but only tells a, a tiny part of the story, doesn't it? He came to the crease with Kent 65 for 5 before T, joined his uncle Joe. They put together a 51 partnership, but it was the time that they took out of the game and the composure of young Jaden Denley. Superb innings uh, by the young Kent batter, 18 years old on his county championship debut. He's seen off if not the best attacking count the county championship, certainly one of the very best to save Kent. With Nathan Gilchrist, who did a great job as well in the latter overs, keeping his nerve, it is a draw. Essex have dominated most of this game, but credit to Kent for holding out at the last here at Chelmsford. Well done, Matt. Uh, a huge thank you from us, from Glenn Speller, from Alex Hode. I think he was here he was. on behalf of BBC Kent on Saturday. And indeed, uh, a well done and thank you to Nikki Chowdhury, our third voice for the last couple of days. It's been a brilliant game of four-day cricket. It's, uh, well, we would have to say from an Essex point of view that the rain has thwarted Essex. But from the Kent perspective, they have saved the game and w drive back to Canterbury over the bridge and having not lost. They've saved the game and well played to Jaden Denley. I'm sure his uncle Joe will give him a delightful pat on the back and well played indeed. In terms of points, well Essex walk away with 15 points and Kent will take home 12. So this drawn game here at Chelmsford. Next week, please do join us because where are Kent next week? Kent's at home against Surrey, Friday 11 oh, o'clock. Join us. Huge local derby yep. there. Kent. Oldest at rivalry. Goes Is back it to really? The 18th century, yeah. Gosh, think of the great players between those two counties. And I'm sure we send our best wishes to Kent County Cricket Club uh, for the, the today's terrible news to hear that Derek Underwood has passed on. So please take our very best wishes back to Kent. I will do. Thank you so much, Dawn, from all involved and from Derek's friends and family. Uh, so many emails today which we didn't get through, and I think people understand because this was such a, an incredible game of cricket right at the end, but we'll pass them on to Kent, of course, all the, all, uh, the best wishes and those memories which uh, people had of Derek Underwood. We'll read, I'm sure, a few out at Canterbury next, uh, next week as well on the commentary. Kent fans want to... Uh, we'll be listening to that as well. But yes, as you say, thank you so much for everyone's memories of the great man and uh, fitting tributes coming in today. Essex, though, moving on as we yeah, do in well, the Well, we haven't got to move far because next week we're at home to Lancashire. And uh, I don't know, maybe there might be a little Jimmy Anderson coming down to have a little bowl. I don't know. But um, nonetheless, it's been a most enjoyable time. Thank you for all those who have contributed to uh, our our emails and texts and whatsapps and tweet twitter have been great to receive your comments and uh, all that remains for me to do is to wish you a very good evening and to wish you all a safe journey home a very good night